Hello everyone and welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium where tonight the North Quincy Raiders will play host to the Skippers of Cohasset High School. My name is Jonathan Calary and thanks for tuning in to this edition of QA TV Sports. I'm being joined up here in the booth by Martin Dunham. And Martin, North Quincy is uh, looking for a win after a couple of tough losses the past couple of weeks. Uh, losing to Braintree here at home and then going on the road last week to Malden Catholic. And uh, have a tough matchup here tonight against the Cohasset Skippers. Yeah, Raiders definitely looking to bounce back. Uh, defense played pretty well last week. Uh, Ball and Catholic, it was a 7 nothing game right until the fourth quarter. Um, and then Ball and Catholic was able to punch in a couple at the end. But the defense was really solid. The offense was was good in spurts. So I think they'll be for looking for a little bit more consistency that tonight against a extremely tough, uh, pretty skilled, pretty athletic Cohasset squad. Uh, next week... North Quincy begins their Patriot League matchup when they travel down to Plymouth to go against uh, the Panthers of Plymouth South, and then they have Pembroke, Situate, and Hanover. Uh, so it doesn't get any easier, Martin, for the, the Raiders uh, beginning next week. And we know Patriot League is usually tough, but um, especially this year, all, all the teams in the, um, the Fisher Division are pretty tough this year. Fisher Division is always tough year in, year out, top to bottom. And what makes next week tougher, not to look too far ahead, but they're going to be on a short week. They're going down the Plymouth South on a Thursday at 6 p.m. So not only is it a day early, but it's an hour early. So it's going to kind of throw the schedule in the whack. It's kind of out of the ordinary. Uh, football teams and coaches in general are creatures of habit, and that's kind of out of habit. So uh, the week will be a little bit different scheduling-wise. Cohasset comes into the game with a record of 2-1. and one. They lost their opener at Abington. Uh, but then beat Silver Lake 20-7 to two weeks ago. And last week at East Bridgewater, big victory, winning 60-28. to uh, So, again, 2-1 and one for the Skippers coming in here. Uh, play out of the South Shore League. Uh, again, always a tough team are the Skippers. It's been a while since we've seen Cohasset uh, football here in the city. We uh, saw them for a few years in a row uh, when uh, North played them. I um, forget how many years back now well, it was. Quincy played them about 15 years ago, okay. 10, 15 years ago. Quincy played them. Uh, Cohasset North only played once back in 2002 uh, at Cohasset, I think. So uh, another matchup where it's not far in distance, but they haven't played as much. Cohasset's a smaller school um, as well, which probably plays into it. But Cohasset's very strong for the division, Division 7, year in, year out. They're competing uh, for a state title. That game you mentioned last week where they put up 60 is absolutely wild. They were up. 28 to 7, I think, at the half, 27 to 7, and then East Bridgewater scored three touchdowns in like three minutes, and then Cohasset just opened it up again. <laughs> but they got, a, they got a very powerful offense. Uh, they got a kid, uh, Liam Appleton, number two, he's senior running back, receiver. It's like wherever they can uh, put him to get the ball, they put him everywhere. All right. North Quincy out of the tunnel, as you can see on your screen there, and getting ready for the captains to come out and go to midfield. Real quick, run down the captains for Cohasset. Number two, Liam Appleton. Number 57, Declan Lee. Number 72, Ben Joyce. And number 77, Teddy Fox. For North Quincy, number seven, Nate Sampson. Number 10, Jordan Mahoney. Number 52, Alan Guan. Number 88, Enria Panariti. And I also see out there uh, number 11, Dan Hudak, as you can see. Uh, Hudak on crutches, uh, and back at the last game uh, against Braintree, uh, we saw him go down with an injury, and unfortunately he's going to be out for the season now. Yeah, unfortunate. Uh, Dan's a great kid. Uh, he's worked extremely hard over his uh, football career. Uh, Multi-sport athletes play basketball, play baseball as well uh, for the varsity team for North, so big loss for them. Uh, feel bad for him, but great kid. All right, so North Quincy won the toss. And they have deferred their option, and they'll kick it away, and Cohasset will receive. Good to see uh, for North Quincy, number 10, Jordan Mahoney. Uh, padded up this week. Last week he was out with an injury. Uh, held back uh, this week. Good to see him back on the field. All right, we will uh, pause here for our national anthem. We'll be back in just one second. Gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would all please rise and remove your hats and headgear for the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what's so proudly we held at the twilight? 
twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's in that shot as the camera zoomed away from the flag at Veterans Memorial Stadium and it went into the lights that the rain coming down here at the stadium it's been a, a wet day uh, the rain had stopped and slowed down for a little bit earlier this evening as the teams were warming up uh, but it is now coming back down so we'll see how that might affect teams here uh, on a uh, already slippery field most likely and trying to keep that ball dry throughout the game as well no wind, so wind is not a factor right now. Uh, the rain, they said, off and on all day. It, it's been off for a couple hours, and now it's starting to pick back up again. Uh, we'll see how that affects both teams. Both teams, Cohasset and North, like to sling the ball around. They'll throw it around a little bit. So uh, quarterbacks will have to just take extra care of the ball, cross trying to make sure they got two hands on it uh, to avoid any costly turnovers. All right, Jordan Mahoney, number 10. Senior for the Raiders will get ready to kick it away. All right, about the 18 yard line is going to be fielded by Cohasset. Gus Green fields it for the Skippers, and Green will take it back to about the 30 yard line. That's where they'll start. Good coverage here from the Raiders. Looked like 81 Tommy Wirtz and number 50 Noah Baker in on that tackle. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, big name for cast to look out for is number two, Liam Appleton. Uh, kind of the theme like where's Waldo? It's going to be where's two. They've lined him up receiver <laughs> by himself away from trip sets. They line him up to the trips. They've lined him up in the backfield. Uh, they've done everything with him possible to get the ball, uh, including Wildcat as well. And under center tonight for the Skippers will be number one sophomore quarterback, Mike Wildfire. They give it to Appleton. Appleton over to the left side. Panarini over there for the tackle. Also number 14, Ben Wallenjom for the Raiders. As you can see right there, he's extremely shifty inside runs. Got the ability to cut it back, make people miss in space. Uh, looks like last there was just blocking, some people call it base, just man on man. And that's up to the running back to read the hole. They call it a gain of four up to 34. Goes Appleton, so second down and six now for the Skippers. Appleton over to the right side this time. Nice job there by the Raiders. Get him in the backfield. Getting him up the bottom of the pile there was Michael Finney. As we'll take a look at the replay. Number 50, Noel Baker, also in on that. Uh, two individuals who have played well defensively all year for the Raiders. Uh, Noel Baker looked like he chased it down from the backside. Michael Finney clogged it up in the middle. And they're going to say Appleton was able to get across the 35, just short of the 36. So we'll call it a gain of just about two there. We'll have to keep an eye on Appleton in the backfield. One of Cohasset's big, bigger plays this year when they need a first down is to leak him out of the backfield off a of play action. Wildfire pass and it's complete over to the right side. With the catch there is number 13, number Will Norgott. Will Norgott. Nice play there by Cohasset. Wildfire, uh, as we see on the replay. Just a sophomore. He's passed for 692 yards so far, seven touchdowns. As we see, the offensive line looked like they might have been releasing for a screen or leaking out to the left there with Appleton. But Cohasset does a nice job. Norjak gets outside on the opposite end of the field to get the first down. So as you said, first and 10 for the Skippers. Pitch over to the left side, Appleton trying to get outside, and he does, crosses the midfield, crosses down the 40 yard line, and will get pushed out of bounds at about the North Quincy. We'll see this brought him down at the 39 yard line, as we'll see here on the replay. Steps out of 
Yeah, just looking at his career stats as a junior starter last year, he had almost 1,000 yards on the ground, 930 yards on the ground, and 940 yards receiving. So that just kind of goes to show his versatility and how much Cohasset relies on him. All right, so they do mark him down at the 39-yard line, so a big pickup there, 18-yard gain for Liam Appleton, and it'll be another first down for the Skippers. Three receivers set to the right of quarterback Wildfire. Put sophomore Gus Green in the backfield. Green gets the carry over to the right side, cut back, and gets across Ball the 35 up to about the 34. Good job there by Ball defensive end number 84, Paul Glenn. Uh, the run went opposite him, away from him. He squeezed it down and was able to make that tackle on the cutback along with Anaya Panariti. Second down and five now for Cohasset. Ball spotted at the North Quincy 34-yard line. In a motion, Wildfire looking to pass, being pressured. He gets hit oh, and sacked. Sack. Big drop there. Coming up there, number two, Taylor Marquez on the sack, as we'll see on the replay. Taylor's had a big year. He plays outside linebacker. He's played a little inside as well. And here he comes just firing off the edge. Nobody blocks. It comes right through the hole. Does a great job wrapping him up. Uh, gets him higher, too, so he's not able to throw it away. Great job there by Marquez. All the way back to the 42-yard line there. Big loss there, eight-yard loss. So it brings up now a third and long for Cohasset. Big play here for North. They've struggled on third downs this year. Let's see if they can get a big stop. Yet Alvinson by himself up top. Wildfire looking to pass down the middle of the field. Has a man. It's incomplete. Goes through the hands of the intended receiver, Will McLaughlin. Crossing route right over the middle. Uh, just over the outstretched arms there. So a good stop by the Raiders. Punt team's coming up for Cohasset. They do a wholesale change, so that's pretty easy to identify for the defense. The Raiders are gonna send they're gonna send one man back. They're gonna send, it looks like Marquise Rodriguez Smith, number three. Number seven, Jack Cullinan to punt. All right, Jack Cullinan kicks it away. And Marquez uh, Rodriguez Smith, excuse me, fumbles it and Trying to see who, who got it there for North Quincy. It was number seven, Nate Sampson, who recovered the fumble there. We'll take a look at the replay. Alert play there by Sampson. Good kick by Cohasset. Just hung in the air. Little end over end, too. Made a little harder to catch. Um, like to see me Rodriguez Smith on that one. Try and go for the fair catch. That would kind of help him out in terms of the Cohasset. I think it was the long snap. Whoever was down there kind of protects him from getting hit right at the uh, point of the catch. You see Mike Galligan there leading the Raiders out. Had 12 completions for 125 yards last week. He's got about 600 yards passing this year. Uh, they spot the ball at the nine-yard line. It's a first and ten from their own nine-yard line. Go the Raiders. And, uh, excuse me, fumble on the handoff. And try to see who comes up with it. And Cohasset comes up with the ball. It was recovered by Connor Walsh. We'll take a look at the replay there and see if we can see what happened. Uh, ben Joyce. Uh, Cohasset, yeah, wrong roster, John. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong Ben Joyce, there, yeah. uh, captain for Cohasset, uh, senior lineman. Uh, unfortunate slip up there, but that's what the, the rain kind of adds that extra element there. You just got to uh, be extra sure that you got the ball two hands. You're covering it up. Look at the pass over the left side of the field, and it's complete to number seven, Jack Cullinane. Just a hitch on the backside there. Good tackle by Rodriguez Smith. He's been a sure tackle this year for the Raiders at over a corner. Has a lot of uh, man coverage assignments, a lot of single receiver side assignments, uh, and Rodriguez Smith has had a good start to the season so far. See if the Raiders might be bringing a little bit of pressure here. Appleton over to the left side. Nice pursuit there by North Quincy. You get pushed out of bounds and see where they spot him out at about the eight yard line. We'll take a look at the replay. Might be a late flag here. I think I saw one come in uh, right near the end of the play. Might be a holding call coming back. Yeah, as we can see right there, number seven maybe. I don't know whether they called it on seven, Jack Cullinan. Wide receiver stock blocking one of the Raiders. I couldn't tell who it was. Was coming back up to make the tackle, and he got just a slight hold from behind. A 
I'll take that and back them up. So you're still waiting for the referee there. As you can see, they're to finally mark it off, and they're going to mark it back down to the 18-yard line. So instance there, since the hold was beyond the line of scrimmage, it'll be from the spot, not from the line of scrimmage. That's why it won't be necessarily like a second and 20 type situation. All right, and North Quincy jumps off sides. We'll actually, we'll see if it's North Quincy or Cohasset. Looks like the side just saying neutral zone. All right, so we'll be against North Quincy, so put five yards back. Against the Raiders. Five yard penalty. It'll put the ball to the 14 yard line. Second and nine for the Skippers. Nico has it here, gonna tighten up. They got two receivers close to the near side and two two receivers as well up top, both in tight splits. All right, so now it's second down in nine now for Cohasset. Wildfire looking to pass, goes a man into the end zone, wide open, and nice catch there, yeah, touchdown. Please. Jack Cullinane did a great job Jack there to keep Cullinane. his feet in the back of the end zone, as you see here on the replay. Nice play there by Cohasset. They just ran crossing patterns over the middle and a, a not Sorry. like a wheel, but a vertical route on that top side as well. Might be a slight miscommunication. All right, I the think I, there is a flag yep. on the play, so we'll see. It might have been after the play, but we'll see. Touchdown is good. Dead ball foul. Right, so it'll Cohasset. be against Cohasset, and they'll assess that on the kickoff. So touchdown stands, but good little play there by Cohasset. They, they typically run a lot of crossing patterns, which is effective if they know you're going to see man coverage. Uh, if you got a couple athletes, maybe you're going to outrun them, or you can run the little the pick pick plays. But nice job there by Colin and Wildfire to connect there. All right, coming off for the extra point lead, John Shannon, Nolan Flaherty will hold. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it is good. Is good. So with seven minutes and 30 seconds left to go here in the first quarter, Kohasa gets on the board first, seven to nothing. Good pressure up the middle there by, looked like number 66, Brody Baker. Uh, took his man right back almost into the kicker. Nearly blocked that. We'll look to see the Raider offense get back on the field. Hopefully they can get back on track. Uh, last drive, it was fumble in the first place, so hopefully they'll be able to uh, string a drive together here. Uh, kind of the past couple weeks, is they've shown some flashes of great ability with Mike Galligan throwing the ball downfield to a host of different targets. they got four or five different guys that have four or five catches this year. Uh, running game has been good in spots too, so hopefully they can string some consistency together tonight. As we see that 15-yard uh, penalty on that touchdown play assessed here on the kickoff. So, Cohasset will be kicking off from the 25. That'll help the Raiders as well, field position-wise. Looks like they got Marquise Rodriguez-Smith and Will Conley back deep to receive. All right, so like I said, it goes back to the 25-yard line. Nice kick there. It's going to be fielded at the 28-yard line for North Quincy. Number 33, Will Conley on the return. And he's going to get pushed out of bounds. We'll see where they spot him out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Um, actually, make it the 40, and that's where North Quincy will start. We'll take a look at the replay real quick, and we can see that. Good job there by Conley just to secure the ball. As we can see, it's slippery as he comes right onto it. It almost falls out, but it does a good job to hang on. And then... Uh, gets a decent gain there on the return. Good job blocking up front uh, by the return team. 40-yard uh, start for the Raiders is good field position, uh, something that they've been battling all year. They haven't been able to get great field position. So this will give them some room to operate. All right, so North on their own 40-yard line, first and 10. 7.22 left to go in the first quarter. Galligan with a handoff, and up the middle goes the ball carry for North Quincy. And that's number 21, Ben Hudak on the carry. And it'll be about a five-yard gain. Nice carry there by Hudak. Looked like just a power play. They had the right guard pulling through. Uh, they had a, a wing player on the left side able to kick out. Uh, Ben's a good downhill runner for the Raiders. 
Uh, great run there on first down. Gets him six. Uh, second and four. Now they're going to go same formation again. Got Nate Sampson alone up top. As you said, they gave him the extra yard on that last play. Kudak makes a man to miss in the backfield. Nice job there. And they're going to spot him up to about the 48-yard line. Take a look at the replay. You can see that juke that move in the backfield. Great job there by Hudak. Evades that first tackle right there. And he does it. He always does a great job. He keeps his feet moving. He doesn't go down on the first hit. Uh, tough runner. You see the Raiders uh, with some substitutions here. Looks like they're going to go with a heavier personnel group, a heavier backfield. See, they're going to go short yardage. Try and pound it for this first down. All right, Galgan under center. Give it to Conley. Conley with some blockers in front. Comes back up the middle of the field. Nice cut there. Pick up the first down and more. Crosses midfield and get to the skipper's 45-yard line. Conley got some action in the backfield last week. He had uh, seven carries out of the backfield. He carried a little bit last year as well in spot duty when needed it. Uh, quick little athlete. He can work out of the slot really well as, uh, as well. Uh, one of the leading receivers for the Raiders this year. He's got, I believe, ten catches this year. So... Uh, another one of the skilled athletes the Raiders have. They got three different guys with at least seven catches. First and ten now for the Raiders. You got Mahoney in a wing. Uh, Galgan looking down the right side of the field. Has a man getting open and big catch there and touchdown. North Quincy, Nate Sampson, number seven, got the space and went all the way in for the touchdown. A great ball thrown there by Galligan as well. And now they're going to have a flag thrown for celebration. That's a tough call there. We'll take a look at the replay real quick there on the touchdown, though. And we get a flag back at the 45 as well. That might have been something after, but what a throw there by Mike Galligan. Drops it right in the bucket for Nate Sampson. And that's when Mike's got a clean pocket, he throws it as well as anybody. And he's an extremely good athlete as well. Just opens up so many options. Nate Sampson with a huge catch. His second touchdown grab of the year. Coming in, he's averaging 17 yards a catch. So when he hits, it's a big play. So the right, touchdown so the, will stand. That's yeah, the good. touchdown's good. And I think that was really a, a ticky-tack call there on the, the celebration, I guess. Yeah, they had a personal foul back uh, at, behind the play as well. Okay. Uh, they dropped at the 45. It, uh, one of the linemen was back blocking, and I think they deemed it a little extra at the end. You can see uh, head coach Ryan Craig there was frustrated on the call there. Yeah, it's, uh, some of those calls are tough. You know, the linemen are going after, going at each other, and you don't always know when the ball's out. And sometimes you're just kind of locked up with the guy, and the ref must have deemed that it was uh, after the play or behind the play. All right, so they're going to march them back on the point after attempt instead of on the kickoff. At least, well, referee is going over the talk to skipper sideline. This coach of fan so he's been a class of around 15 years at least. Uh, built a nice program down there. Real quick, we'll take a look at the replay on the... Uh, on the touchdown pass there. Not sure if we're going to see. Uh, yeah. Well, we won't see the back end, but we'll see. Yeah, just again, was just what a great, great catch, throw. Yeah. Uh, protection held up really nicely. Mike was able to step into his throw uh, clean. And Nate does a great job. He keeps running onto it. Sometimes as a receiver, you get nervous and you slow down. So I, I think they they got him not in the celebration, but the spike of the ball, which, again, ticky tack on, on my. On my end here, but I, <laughs> it's tough now. I know the the refs are trying to emphasize sportsmanship and all these things, but I, I agree. I think in, in the heat of a celebration where it's you're with your teammates, I think you know the spirit of the rule would should be more in terms of if you're celebrating, say like if you're on the other team, I'm getting up in your face. Right, right. As opposed yeah. to you're just celebrating with your team. There's no harm and it doesn't affect anything there. So I definitely agree. I think that is pretty uh, ticky tack. All right, Alvin Nicola comes in and gets the extra point through. So five ten left to go in the first, and we are tied at seven. Alvin Nicole has been solid all year and kicking. Uh, hasn't missed a PT yet and makes him 7-for-7 seven seven on the year, uh, the sophomore. So another in the steady line of kickers for the Raiders. 
We had a good look at the kickoff team here. A couple of names we'll be looking at. Number 81, that Tom Wirtz. He's done a good job out there. Ariel White, number four. Uh, a couple guys we see number five, Tim Tolan, uh, sophomore. Uh, he was out last week with an injury as well. They held him out precautionary, but he's back, and he's one of the biggest hitters for the Raiders. Good to see him back, uh, as well as Jordan Mahoney. Mahoney goes both ways. We saw last drive, running back. He can line up in the backfield, carry the ball. A little bit of uh, blocking back, like H-back type situation, that last drive. Uh, plays linebacker on defense. Important on special teams, kickoffs, handles, punts. Uh, ca senior captain has been a huge part of this team. So they mark it off that 15 now on the kickoff. So to add from that confusion <laughs> yeah, from yeah. about five minutes ago. All right, so here we go. High kick there by North. And oh, it just bounces. It. And taking it down there was Jack Cullinane. But great job there by North to continue downfield. Take a look at the replay here as the North Quincy Pursuit did not stop. And looked like a little confusion on Cohasset as far as who was going to field the ball. Yeah, not miscommunication. Somebody may have called it. Somebody thought they might have heard somebody call it. Uh, usually it's one of the guys in the back end that will call for it because they're running forward onto it. And kickoffs, it's a little bit higher. You don't want to be running back to catch to then go forward. But Raid is very fortunate there. And like you said, the pursuit was excellent. They're, all 11 guys are right in on the tackle there. They probably got a five-yard tackle for loss after the initial catch as well. All right, so at the 43 is where they'll, excuse me, 42. Good tackle there by Nate Sampson on the sideline. Appleton just cuts it back. Uh, Paul Glenn almost made that tackle for North, just uh, just couldn't reach him there. But as we can see, Appleton is just so dangerous, even with having that contain, he's able to bounce it outside. And he's got the quickness to just elude the defensive line. I spot the ball up to the 42-yard line. The last week was, I think, the first week they really put him in the backfield on a more full-time base. He had 17 carries last week for 86 yards, two touchdowns. All right, pitch over to the left side. Appleton trying to get outside. Nice pursuit there by North Quincy. Flag thrown on the play. Number two, Liam Appleton on the carry. Appleton gets up to the 43, but we'll see what the flag is. We'll take a look at the replay real quick here as well. So this is a pretty heavy tendency from Cohasset. Anytime they get three receivers, they like that little quick toss out to the three receiver side. With a flag on the play, holding. Missed. So it was a. Oh, that was to say I missed the signal. Yeah, there. I, I missed if it was a hold or a block in the back, but none. Either way, it'll be coming back. It's one of the tough parts with running like the old. School, you can't do it really the old school crack scheme where you just like kind of blow somebody up from the side, but. It's one of those. Not, not saying that's what happened on that play, but it's one of the, it's tough when, say, if somebody's come coming to pinch in, it's easy to kind of get them in the back or get them on the top of the shoulder. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. That'll bring the ball back to. The uh, so there's a block in the okay. back there. Yeah, yep. So they mark the ball back to the 32 yard line. That's it. Tough spot there for pass it. North does a good job pursuing. They duck it inside and you kind of just clip him right on the back. And we got a false start, so they'll take class back another five. False start against the Skippers. That's a five yard be really big for the North Quincy defense if they can build on some momentum. They just scored a touchdown. Uh, now they've forced a couple penalties here from Cohasset. If they can get a stop, it's second and, I mean. 20. 20. Yep. So that'd be really big if they could get a start. If they could hold them here, get a punt, get good field position again. As we saw in that last drive, if they can get good field position, the uh, offense is pretty dangerous. All right, so that's just that second down and 20 back at their own 27-yard line out of the skippers. Wildfire in the shotgun. All right, go downfield. It has a man downfield, and it is a oh, great play downfield there by Nate Sampson to break that ball up. Number 13 for Cohasset, Will Norgut was down there, but Samson breaks it up as we'll see in the replay. Great deflection there. Uh, Samson was one of the deep men. He was zoning off. He had a couple threats in his area, but uh, Cohasset was able to just sneak somebody behind. He does a good job to save the day uh, right there. Uh, Cohasset sent a couple people deep. 
down the middle to attract the free safety, and they had a wheel uh, coming from the inside as well. Uh, just trying to stretch the Raiders uh, not only horizontally, but down the field as well. All right, third and long now for the Skippers. 3.27 left to go here in the first quarter. Wildfire trying to make something happen. Rolls out of the pocket, fires, and it is incomplete. Was looking for Appleton down the sideline, but the ball was out of bounds. That's a, a, a unique formation there uh, from Cohasset. They had a full receiver set uh, down towards the bottom of the screen, and they had Appleton by himself up top. So uh, it's a lot of four receiver sets usually involve some sort of a screen just because you get three blockers out there. And then with Appleton by himself, uh, they could put him on a variety of different routes to try and win one-on-one. -on -one. As you saw right there, Wildfire scrambled out and was just looking for him right away. All right, Marquez is back deep for North Quincy. And he's just going to let that yeah. go. Actually, it lands Nate out Samson. of bounds. Oh, excuse me, it's Nate Sampson, excuse me. So, a great turn there for North Quincy. They strung, now strung a couple drives together. They get the offensive score, and now they get the defensive stop that they needed. Cohasset back themselves up. Uh, North does a good job holding up, and they're going to start on the 45. So great flip of the field there for them, and hopefully they can drive right back down. All right, 3-10 to go here. They just said ball at the North Quincy 45-yard line, first and 10 for the Raiders. Going to go heavy backfield, power eye, Conley at the back. Conley gets the pitch, trying to get outside, cuts back up in, crosses the 50-yard line up to the 45, maybe puts his head down. And gets a couple more yards, and we're marking down now at the 43-yard line. We'll see on the replay. Great job uh, by Conley, showing some patience. The Raiders looking to go tempo here as we see Conley does a nice job cutting it up. It's a nice block as well from number four, Ariel White. There was backside pursuit coming. He was able to just get enough. So we see the Raiders hustling the line. They mark him down at the 44, first and 10 from there. Conley again on the carry. Gets across the 40, and we'll see if they give him the 39 on the... So let's try to spot the forward progress. We and they do give him the 39, as we'll see in the replay. Yeah. Nice job, just the lead play right up the middle. Jordan Mahoney, Ariel White leading the way from the backfield. Raiders are coming right back up to the line again. Conley this time with a pitch to the right. And this time Kohasa does a nice job of picking him up and bringing him down, leading the way there. Henry Richard, one of the first plays in there for Kohasa. North Quincy's done a good job this year. They mix some um, tempos up a little bit. Uh, whenever they get a first down, sometimes they'll uh, look to kind of capitalize on it and jump on it. Uh, some teams like to do that if they feel they got the matchup. They'll just keep pounding uh, away at that matchup. Uh, unfortunately, nothing there on the pitch for Conley as we see class does a good job rallying up to it. Bring down about third and six. So a good medium yard situation here for Mike Galligan. Gus Green in there on the tackle as well, amongst a host of other players from Cohasset in that last play. Third and about six now for North Quincy. See if North Quincy can get any quick passing game here. They're seeing man coverage across the board. Galligan looking for the pass, was looking over to the left side for Cam Sampson, but they could not connect. Sampson slipped a little bit in the play there as well, as we see in the replay. Yeah, it looked like a good read as we see. Uh, Galligan liked his read right, right away. Not sure that he was able to get everything on it as well. Pass it showed man, and they were soft on the outside there, so a quick little hitch by Cam Sampson to just free himself right at the first down marker. Uh, fell just a little bit short. Raider often still out here on fourth down, so they're going to go for it. Fourth and six. Looks like they're going to see the same defense from class. They got one safety in the middle of the field, and they got uh, four DB types lined up man-to-man. -man. Galligan running out to the right. He's going to keep it himself, and looks like he's going to be short of the first down. We'll see where they mark him. And, yeah, they mark him down at the 38-yard line, and it'll be a turnover and downs for the Raiders. We'll see you look at the replay in the last play. And Galligan took what he could get. Looked like the Raiders were using some crossing patterns there, something we saw Kohasset use in their touchdown drive. Uh, Nate Sampson, I couldn't tell who the other receiver was on that side. Um, both cleared out. Not sure if it was a designed run by Galligan or if he just rolled out, but the two crossing routes cleared it out, and he was just short. All right, so first and 10 now for the skippers. And up to about the 40-yard line will go Appleton. 
good job there by the Raiders. Looked like that might have been number 50, Noah Baker, in on that tackle. Number 84, Paul Glenn, defensive end, also came in on that. Uh, Noah Baker's been a uh, steady play for the past few years uh, for the varsity sophomore. He saw some time in the offensive line, and then the past couple of years he's been going both ways. Uh, right now he's at inside linebacker. His uh, handoff goes to... So Liam Appleton going Joe to the Appleton right side, the and Michael Finney comes up with a nice stop. Appleton will get up to about the 42-yard line. See here on the replay. So they use a little. They've been using that jet motion to try and kick out the end and create a little alley, but uh, Michael Finney there to stop that. He's been doing a great job getting some penetration on the inside, uh, able to make plays in the backfield. And Class is going to be content with letting the time run out here in the first quarter. Both teams go to the sideline. All right, so as you said, end of the first quarter play here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. And it's been an exciting first quarter, and with Cohasset 7 and North Quincy 7 as well. I want to remind all of our viewers you can log on to Quincy Access TV's website at qatv.org for program schedules, membership information, video on demand, live streaming, and much, much more. So again, qatv.org. For all our sports coverage, go on to qatv.org slash sports. Next week, QATV will be here at the stadium on Saturday, October 7th, and it'll be Roll Hats Weekend for Quincy High School. Uh, there'll be soccer games at uh, noon, 2.30, and then the football team will take the field at 6 p.m. Um, so, again, you can tune in to all the action on QATV for Roll Hats Weekend. I believe the... Uh, Quincy High girls will be taking the field first for the soccer game at noon against Cambridge Ridge and Latin. The boys will be playing Excel out of South Boston at 2.30. Uh, and then Pembroke High School will come in for the football game against the Presidents. I know they, they've done a nice job for the past year. I know they did one in the fall last year. They uh, held a sequence of events in the spring as well. Um, they do a good job really bringing out the, the high school, the students, and getting everyone involved out on one day for multiple teams across multiple clubs. Yeah, it was uh, a lot going on, and uh, like I said, getting a lot of the uh, alumni and boosters and everyone to come back, and students involved there as well. That's going to be close. All right, quick pass over to Jack Cullinane, Jack and Cullinane. they're going to spot him forward progress at the 46, and he'll be a yard shy of the first down, excuse me, in the replay. Quick little hitch on the outside, Rodriguez Smith on him right at the catch. They're going to say he's just short. Good job to get the wrap up. He kept his feet driving as well to make sure that there was no forward uh, lean or progress on that. So that'll bring up now fourth down, and we'll call it less than a yard for the skippers. Raiders got to watch the ball here. Cohasset might try the hard count again. And Wildfire will keep it himself, and on the second effort there by him, he's going to get the first down. Nice job there. Initially, he was right at the first down marker, but kept his feet moving, and we'll see here in the replay. Um, it was actually Wildcat, oh, John. They went yep. uh, Appleton quick in the, out of the backfield. Wildcat uh, took it right up the middle. Uh, they just ran inside dive play. They just blocked man on it, and he just gets to find the hole and see it. They've used it a lot the first few weeks down near the goal line, uh, not as much in the middle of the field, but it's a good short yardage, and he did it pretty quick right out of the jump too. Uh, create confusion. The Raiders were alert to it. A couple guys were pointing it out, uh, but they got just the yardage that they needed. Classic did. Spot him out the 49-yard line, so first and 10. And he's going to line up his receiver backside here. Being pursued from behind, and a big sack there oh, for nice North job. Quincy. Ben Wallenjump came up with a tackle, and they're going to say that Appleton, excuse me, Wildfire was down, but nonetheless, big sack there by Wallenjump, as we'll see here on the replay. Great job by Wallenjump. Pursued it right on the backside. Spin move right around the left tackle there. Comes from behind and almost got the strip as well. He came down. That right hand almost freed it up before Wildfire was down. But great job, great pursuit on the back end by Wallenjom. Wallenjom, uh, another one of the athletic multi-sport kids. Uh, Wallenjom has been a part of the volleyball team for the past couple of years. It's enjoyed a lot of success in the postseason. Uh, big part of their success, especially last year as well. Uh, we'll see, we might see him a little bit at receiver as well tonight. All right, so that puts the skippers back in a second and 21. Big pass downfield, and it's almost intercepted there by Nate Sampson. Take a look at the replay, and he's you can see his hands on his head. He's like, oh, I should have had that, but 
Nice job there by Sampson. Uh, he did a great oh. job. He was reading Wildfire's eyes. He kind of just kind of looked it down the hallway, and Nate had a beat on it. He, like he said, he had just missed it. That's that's the second one he's got his hand on that he's been right there. Uh, so that's another great play there by the Raiders. It's going to force another third and long here, third and 21 at the 38-yard line. Uh, they move their safeties back. Ben Hudak is playing center field at about the, his own 45-yard line. Sampson back there as well. Rodriguez Smith is set back. So they have four defensive backs way back here. Well, fire pass over the right side, complete, and right there it was complete to Appleton. And they're going to push him out of bounds at about the 45 yard line. We'll see in the replay. The motions out of the back real quick, and they're just going to run him on a wheel. They're hoping to get a good matchup. Uh, Marquez just fell right off of that, but he's a pretty athletic kid too. So uh, I think North will take their chance on the matchup with him one on one more times than not being able to make that tackle. Uh, just a shot play for Cohasset. Really, you don't have a lot drawn up in the book for third and 22 in terms of getting the first down. So. Uh, just looking to improve their field position and try and flip the field. All right, flags thrown on the play. We're going to have a false start called against Cohasset. So unfortunately for the skippers, that kind of takes away the yards that they just gained on that last pass play there. But that last offensive play for Cohasset just kind of shows how they're going to use Appleton in any way they can to get him the ball, whether it's receiver. In that instance, they had him in the backfield and they motioned out. Uh, they're really creative in terms of finding ways to get him the football. All right, Cullinan kicks away. North there was close there again on blocking that kick. Back there was Nate Sampson. He's just going to back away from it and let it roll, and it goes all the way down to the 20-yard line. Great roll there on the kick, and North Quinns will start at their own 20 with 8.45 left to go in the second quarter. A little grubber there. Uh, good job by the Rays. Just kind of let that go. That's where things kind of get hairy if you try to field a, a ground ball. Great job again, as you said, it was almost blocked, and it looked like it was number 66, Brody Baker, again with that inside pressure on the interior of the defensive line. You push this guy pretty much literally almost into the kicker. He almost drew him into the kicker. Yep. So he's, ha he's having a good game, uh, both sides of the ball. You see him on the offensive line as well. He's li been lining up at left tackle, uh, as we can see him right up top there, 66. They're going to motion Marquez across here. Our handoff, as you said, over to the right side. And still on his feet there is number 21, Ben Hudak. And he didn't want to go down. And they're going to say with forward progress to mark him down to 25, as you'll see in the replay. Ben's a tough kid. He's got a uh, refuse to be tackled kind of attitude here, as you see the pile. The pile just keeps moving and. Uh, just keeps going, doesn't stop his legs. Uh, good job there by the offensive line. Uh, looked like number 50, Noah Baker, came around on the pull, and uh, Taylor Marquez leading through the hole as well. Did a nice job sealing off the linebacker. Second down and five now for the Raiders. Conley was in motion, they give it to him. And he picked the first down a little bit more as well. Nice job there by Conley, flag thrown on the play. They're gonna spot him down at the 32 yard line, but we'll see what the flag is. Of that play is Might have been a hold on the outside. Down. Conley's extremely patient when he's got the ball, and then he's got that little extra burst right when he makes that cut. Real shifty. Yeah, they're going to bring it back with a hold. That's unfortunate. There was a penalty marker on the play, holding against North Quincy. Well, that's something I'm sure we'll see North come back to that jet uh, with it being that successful uh, on the outside. They'll come back to that at some point. And, uh, he said Will's got a he's got an ability to make a, a small play into a big play just with the shift shiftiness his agility. All right, so they march the ball back to the North Quincy 17 yard line. So bring up the second and 13 now for North. Four receiver set to the east side of quarterback Mikey Galligan. Play action fake. Galligan rolling out to his right, being pursued. And he had a. See, I'm not sure if that was, they're going to say he was intercepted, but he was out of bounds. 
Max Hessian on the catch there. We'll take a look at the replay. It looked like he was just trying to throw it away, but came up there. It was a nice effort, but luckily for North Quincy, he was out of bounds. Yeah, it was a tight play. Try to fit into a tight window. Oh, so. That was uh, John Shannon, number 10, excuse me. But nonetheless, the incomplete pass. So third and 13 here. The Raiders have done a good job uh, throughout the season being able to push it downfield. If Mike Gallagher gets time, he can really sling it. So this is not out of reach for the Raider offense. Third down for North. Plenty of time. Gallagher fires to the left, and it's incomplete. Was looking for Conley and could not connect. Good read. Just missed the mark there. Conley was right at the stick. Uh, looked like good timing there. Was going to hit him right out of the break uh, for a first down as well. Just barely missed. But uh, Raiders getting a lot of opportunities in the pass game. Uh, again, Kohasa was playing man-to-man. -man, so uh, North's got some pretty good athletes that can get open. Uh, in a comeback route is uh, one of the easiest ways to kind of get open. You try and run the guy off, you sell like you come vertical, and you come back at the last second. And if the quarterback does a good job timing and he's got the ball out before the break, DB doesn't really have a shot at it. All right, low snap, but nice job to get that kick off. Goes over to the right side, and it's going to take a North Quincy roll up to the 50-yard line, and still going. And they're going to spot it down at the Cohasset 48. A good job by Mike Nista, the punter, number 34. Fielded that low snap. Uh, kept his composure. You get the kickoff. Didn't get everything on it, as we see in the replay. It was right at his feet. With the pressure coming in, he did a good job just to get it away. And he got a nice roll out of it, fortunately. So, uh, long snapper for North Quincy, number 81, Tommy Wirtz. And I missed who else was on there, but they were on there to... Uh, down the football the at the, the 48. Holding against North Quincy. Oh, and there was a, a hold on the play. Did not see that. I did not see that as well. Neither <laughs> did either of the two teams because they were both lined up ready to play the next snap. All right, so we'll see. So they're going to move North Quincy back now to the like they went to the seven yard line. So as you see, the long snap at the end of the day when Tommy Ward's got a towel, so hopefully he's kind of dry off his ball of the hands there, a much better snap. Good kick there, it's gonna be fielded by Kohasa at the 40 yard line. Will Norgut takes the kick over to the right side, crosses the 30 and gets up to about the 28 as see on the replay. Kohasa had two guys back on there, they didn't rush the punt this time. Uh, good punt by Nista. Um, but it almost out kicked the coverage a little bit, but raised to a good job rallying. Number 84, Paul Glenn, uh, one of the guys in on that tackle. It looked like host of Raiders coming in to make that play. But Gohasset's going to start with good field position on the North 29. 6.57 left to go here in the second quarter. Here we got uh, Alfton by himself. Handoff goes to Gus Green. And Green does a nice job there, fighting his way forward. He gets up to the 20-yard line, and it'll be a nine-yard gain, as we'll see here on the replay. You don't see it on screen, but one of the uh, tips to look at almost would be Appleton. Even though he was lined up by himself, he was so far wide. It would have just made a really long throw. So it's one of those things I'm sure the defensive staff from North kind of takes note of. If a receiver's taking an extra wide split, it's most likely a run just because of the length of the throw. Well, similar uh, setup here. Green on the run, goes up the middle. He goes in for the touchdown, but a flag is thrown. I believe this one's going to be coming back here on a hold. And it will be a hold against Cohasset. Against the skippers, nullify that play. A little fortunate break there for the Raiders. Uh, looks like they get a... Uh, in terms of having Alton by himself, too, it looks like they get corner some help. It's the outside linebacker, Anaya Panaridi, was over there to help on the inside, but uh, that'll back the uh, skippers up, excuse me. So they back up to the 30 yard line, so instead of seven points on the board, or excuse me, six points on the board, it is a second down and 11 now. So Alton's going to split out wide again. They get Gus Green, I think. Yep, Gus Green's back in the backfield. Right, Green with the carry over to the right side. And let's we'll see where they spot him down. Be about the 
26-yard line on the run there by Green. Yeah, Green got a few carries last week. Uh, one of their other start running backs, he must be out. Um, this is another sophomore, number five, Mark Monahan for class, is another one of their uh, better athletes. Uh, he's played a lot of running back as well. But Green's uh, shown a lot of ability so far. He's made some special teams plays as well and some plays on defense. Wildfire looking to pass over the, comp the left side, complete to Appleton. Appleton makes a man miss, and he goes in for the touchdown. To number two, Liam Appleton. Uh, they finally took their chance in that one-on-one -on -one matchup. See, we had seen that formation a few times here on this drive, and as you'll see in the replay, it worked here as Appleton gets the ball and just fake to the inside and goes outside for the score. The, the play action helps on that, too. It kind of drew the defense away from it a little bit, uh, gave Wildfire some time. That's a pretty long throw to, from the offset hash uh, to come across almost towards the numbers. Uh, so that's a that's a pretty impressive throw. Even if it's just a hitch, it's a six-yard hitch that's probably 30 yards in the air just because you got to come across the field with it. But uh, as you see, when you you got a good athlete out there. He makes something happen after the catch, and he did a nice job there. All right, John Shannon's extra point attempt is good. So with 5.23 left to go here in the second quarter, Cohasset comes down the field with an impressive drive, and they take a 14-7 lead. Hey, they'll put up points with anybody. They put up uh, 60 against East Bridgewater last week, and Wildfire had 19 completions and six of them for touchdowns. So uh, he's shown, even though he's just a sophomore, he's coming into his own and uh, has been making a lot of plays for the Cohasset Skippers so far. Their only loss was week one against Abington, uh, team, another team that's apparently right there in state title contention within their division. And it seems like every year it's those two teams that are battling out in the South Shore. Uh, Abington, I think, is undefeated as well still. Uh, we saw them last year up here play north. Uh, always a, a tough program. That's where uh, Cohasset will be a, is a good test here for north in terms of uh, competitive game. Uh, similarly sized teams, we see the Cohasset sideline. Even though they might be Division Seven, they got a lot of uh, athletes in uniform participation-wise. So you see Will Norjot. Coming to line up the kick. He's got Rodriguez Smith and uh, Conley deep to receive at their own 10. All right, Nordrath's kick. In the field at the 10 yard line by Conley. Conley with a little bit of space. So get brought down there, was caught from behind, and will finally get brought down at the uh, 30 yard line. We'll see in the replay, decent return there by Conley. Conley does a good job setting up his return team here. So you see, he cuts up the middle outside, and then number four, Ariel White, does a good job just sealing that. Cohasset defended to the outside. Conley does a good job seeing that, cuts right up in, uh, gets upfield. Sometimes you see guys try and bounce it outside a little bit more, but Conley does exactly what you want, puts his foot in the ground and gets upfield. All right, North starting on their own 30-yard line. 5.14 to go in the quarter. Send Conley in motion. They fake it to him, and they're going to give it instead to number 21. That's Ben Hudak, and Hudak will get up to about the, we'll see where they spot the forward progress. Initially, they had it at the 35, but they make it the 34, as we'll see in the replay. Good misdirection there for the Raiders. They run a counter play. Looks like there might have been a little bit of miscommunication in the backfield. Somebody, uh, Marquez was looking for the ball, pulling around. Hudak took it, but uh, the jet action was nice, and it pulled the Cohasset defense towards their sideline, which kind of helped with a little miscommunication there in the backfield. Hudak did a good job to get four out of it. Second down and six now for the Raiders. Looks like it was Hudak again on the carry for North Quincy. Fighting his way forward, and they're going to put him up to the 36-yard line. Looks like in on that play for Cohasset was number 55, Dan Baker, sophomore, 6'5", 200, right in the middle. Inside linebacker as well for Cohasset captain Declan Lee. Does a nice job, 6'2", 220. Cohasset's got some good size up front in that front six. Um, do a good job shutting it down there. Third and four for the Raiders. Uh, very manageable situation for them. 
You see Glass that likes man. They tried some crossing routes earlier. They tried a hitch. We'll see if they go back to that. Galligan pass over the middle is incomplete. Was looking for Conley. But there are several Cohasset skippers over there to defend that play, including number seven, Jack Cullinane. Looked like he might have got a hand on it. Also number 50 over there, Christian Sten Stenmans. Tough throw. The Raiders did go with the crossing option there over the middle. They had Conley coming across as we see Galligan step into that. As you see, just it's yep. tough, and it looked pretty deep, too. Usually when you get crossing routes, it's about, you know, four to five yards. I mean, you try and build that mesh so you can get that pick play over the middle. Uh, the fact they ran a little deeper, the safety was right there. It kind of brought a lot of traffic into it. Appleton was also over there, Liam Appleton, to break up that play for Cohasset. Nice high kick there. Bounced, and it's going to be fielded at the 34-yard line for Cohasset. And let's see who is giving up the bottom of the pile there. Looks like it's at number 13, Will Norsgaard. Nice return. They took it on one hop, and I don't think the <laughs> Raiders were ready for that one, as we see on the replay. Nissa gets good hang time on this punt. It gets the bounce. But Norshot does a good job. He fields it on one hop, able to make a couple guys miss, and then takes it right up the sideline. Nice job, though, uh, by the Raider punt team to get downfield and minimize the damage. Gonna go Appleton now is by himself near the opposite sideline on the short side. I'm gonna hand it off again. Gus Green on the carry gets up to the 50 yard line. Nice game there in the first down on the replay. You see they try that little kick out action again. Norjot comes across the kick out the end and Gus Green's cutting up the middle. Interesting to see how Cohasset's kind of changed up their offensive plan a little bit. Uh, Appleton was in the backfield to start the game for the first couple drives, taking a bulk of the carries. Now he's been lined up as receiver. So I'm not sure if it's their, they see a matchup they like, or maybe that's just their way of kind of spelling him without taking him off the field. Green right up the middle here on second down. He's going to be right at the first down marker. We'll see where they spot him down. And it looks like it should be enough for the first down, but... That's going to be pretty close. And uh, Ben Hudak gave him a pretty good uh, hit at the end of that, too, as we see they run that. It's not a Jet motion, but it's not really fake jet. Noah Baker initially gets the uh, wrap, and then Ben Hudak comes in and puts a shoulder in right at the marker. They're going to, looks like they're going to measure. And, and it's a first down by first a, down a, a link of the chain there. First down for Kohasi. Now that was an interesting, I don't know, maybe I just haven't been as observant, but that seems interesting that they measured they brought the ball over to the side. I mean, usually you bring the chains yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So Hass going to spread it out again, and Alton's by himself. Oh, nice job. Nice break there by Nate Sampson. Take a look at the replay there. You can see that, again, they were looking for Appleton over the left side. They faked the handoff. Similar play to the touchdown pass, and it looked like Wildfire's pass just got a little wobbly there on the coming out of his hands. Yeah, it's a tough. Th it's a long throw to throw it from from the hash uh, towards the numbers. Uh, even even if it was a good throw, I think uh, Samson would have been able to break that up. He was right there, uh, right as the ball arrived, and uh, he sat in his stance. He was pretty good uh, to get fooled there. So now. He's by himself, Appleton, and they got double coverage on him, but they're going to hand it off. Oh, nice play by Panarini, almost. Green on the tackle. I said he got away from Panarini, but could not get away from the rest of the Raiders. We'll see on the replay there. It's going to be a loss in a play up to the 50-yard line, or back to the 50-yard line, excuse me. Number 22, Gus Green. Timeout, Cohasset. Cohasset's going to take their first timeout of the half to stop the clock with about 2.11 left. It looks like a two, right? Yeah, that's a two. Yep, <laughs> yep, two eleven. We, got, we get the, the pole right in the vision here. No, I know. It's kind of tough with the, <laughs> the scoreboard from where we sit here in the press box where uh, there's – uh, up for the, with the fence, for when you know, trying to prevent the ball from going to the bus yard there. Uh, the pole is right in front of the uh, the time there, so it makes it tough to see what some of the numbers are. But 2.11 we, to go. They we're still losing balls into the bus yard. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that, the, the kids are getting better. They're booting it right over the net now. Uh, but that was an interesting call there from Cohasset. They lined up Appleton by himself, and North had double coverage out there, but they ran the run in the motion towards that direction. It brought everybody over there. 
and I'm not sure if it was supposed to be an inside run because Appleton, he was he was trying to run his man off, and then he just went to kind of uh, he was just kind of watching the play. He wasn't really blocking, so indication it might have been more of a off tackle or inside type of run that they were looking for, as opposed to getting all the way out to the edge. But third and long here for Casa. It'll be interesting to see what their mindset coming out of the timeout is. I imagine if they called it, they're going to be looking to go for the first down. They're not just going to, you wouldn't call the timeout to run the clock out. All right, they spot the ball at the 48 yard line, so it'll be third down and about 12 now for the Skippers. Wildfire play action fake looking down left side of the field for a man, and it is caught by Appleton. We'll see if he's in bounds or not. And they say, yes, he was in bounds. It's a huge play, and he goes out of bounds to stop the clock. Let's we'll take a look here at the replay. Uh, he, he, Appleton does a good job on his route here. Kind of baits it inside and uh, backs it out. And, oh, man, that's really close. Oh, I think he just barely, he might have just barely got his foot down. That was pretty close. I, th I think he did get it down. Uh, that was pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, that's a good throw by Wildfire. I mean, he placed that right in. First, first right on the sideline. Yeah, I think he. It looks like he's got that right foot yeah, right on the line there. That, that toe might have been yeah. in there. So. All right, Green now on the carry over to the right side. Nice pursuit there by North Quincy. And three or four tackles over there. Taylor Marquez leading the way for the North Quincy Raiders. Brody Baker with that in initial push on the inside. I think he got the initial hit. So we see there uh, Ben Wall and John chasing down from the backside. Uh, Paul Glenn does a good job uh, standing up at D end as well on that end. Try and keep it boxed in to try and not let it bounce outside. Uh, they're going to say no gain on the last play, so second down in 10. Uh, clock's still running here, just under a minute and a half. Uh, it's a big series if you're looking at it from Cohasset's perspective because North is getting the ball to start the second half. Um, fake the screen, fake they're the going to look down the middle. Wildfire's pass is intercepted oh, by nice North play. Quincy. Marquez Rodriguez-Smith with the ball over to the left side, trying to get up, and nice job there. It was tipped by one of the other North Quincy defenders. So we'll take a look here on the replay, and it went into the hands of Rodriguez-Smith. Great job by the North defense, staying alert. They tried to fake the screen to Appleton, and was that Ben Hudak on yep. the tip there? Ben Hudak with the great tip, and... If you see Rodriguez Smith on the return, that's why he's on the return team. He's one of the fastest players out there on the field. He got up the sideline pretty quickly there. Now with the head of steam, great job there. So the ball is going to be at the 27-yard line. Raiders got a minute to get the ball down the field, and they have all three timeouts. So uh, we'll see what the Raiders have for a one-minute drill. Three timeouts. Glass has shown a lot of man coverage, and North Quincy's had some opportunities. Uh, we, on the touchdown play, they were able to hit Nate Sampson on early was in man coverage as we get another look at the interception. Hudak at the perfect timing to break yeah. up that play. That SWAT, yeah. And great job by Rodriguez Smith on the return. All right, Galligan looking to pass. And that's going to flag, flag is thrown on the play. This is going to come back regardless of what happens here. Is they're going to say a block in the back? by North Quincy. Yeah, tough play. Ganga does a good job getting out, and uh, one of the linemen unfortunately got beaten. He was trying to protect the quarterback there, but uh, right in front of the official. Uh, he's looking right at it. That's unfortunate. So that's going to back him up a little bit. You got 55 seconds now um, because that's going to back him up. So we'll see whether that changes. North's plan of attack here. I know the initial return off the interception might be looking to push the ball for a score, but now it's first and 20. You're inside your own 20. Might be looking at just running the clock out, perhaps, or make Cohasset waste some timeouts. North, does, as we said, does get the ball to start in the second half here, so key that they don't uh, have a big turnover or anything that's really going to give Cohasset another chance. Uh, they're trying to get a little short pass out there to Conley in space, but it's overthrown, so that stops the clock. And just as you were saying, Martin, maybe, you know, run the clock out, run a couple plays there, but it stops the clock there. Brings up now second down for North Quincy. It, it just looks like a little, I don't know, I don't want to say miscommunication. I don't know if Conley wasn't expecting it, maybe. The Galgan had it right on him in the flat, and he had some room. 
had he been able to catch, he had to get upfield. He had a couple receivers out in front blocking there. But second down, he had uh, no harm. Hassett's going to play a little bit softer on the outside here. The Looks like they still in man, but they're about eight yards off. All right, Hudak on the carry for North Quincy. Gets across the 25, still on his feet up to the 30-yard line now. Looked like he was going to get wrapped up. And a great run there by Hudak as they're going to mark him down at the 30-yard line. And I believe a timeout was called yep. down the field. Yeah, uh, Coach Ryan Craig was calling that right. That, kind of <laughs> that run kind of changed it there. Went from second and 20, now to get third and seven, third and eight here. This is... Uh, a situation you can definitely get a first down out of it here. Galley can get some time in the pocket. Uh, we saw the Raiders use it, some tempo earlier. It was with a three back set, um, but I'm sure that they have a hurry up tempo offense uh, for their spread stuff. We, we see uh, on hard to see here, but Galley on his left hand, he's got a wristband uh, there, and all these guys. If you take a look at the you know the linemen, all have wristbands. The skills all have wristbands. We're all looking at it. Uh, so, in the event that they need to hurry up, uh, they're able to do so. With uh, They won't have to huddle. All right, so brings up a third and seven from the 30 for the Raiders. 25 seconds to go in the half. Galligan looking, looking, being pursued, and he's going to get sacked from behind there. Big play there. Number 72 coming up there, Ben Joyce. Ben Joyce. Captain for class of 5'11", 195, defensive lineman. Classic gets good pressure. North wasn't able to get anyone free downfield. And Cohasset is going to call their second timeout now. Uh, it's going to force North to punt. We'll see if Cohasset maybe tries to come after it. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they try to line up some sort of punt block to maybe put some pressure on North. Uh, Cohasset's been pretty dangerous in the return game as well. They've put a couple guys back. Um... Unfortunate there for the Raiders. They couldn't uh, quite get that first down, keep the chains moving. Had they gotten the first down, the clock would have stopped, so they would have had an opportunity either to either run another play or clock or call timeout, whatever their plan was for that situation. We got number 34, Michael Nista for the Raiders. He'll be back to kick. Uh, Raiders uh, got three up backs. Uh, in front of him, looking to protect it. Our right, ball spotted at the 28-yard line, and 17 seconds left to go here. You see the three uh, middle upbacks pretty alert there. Panaridi, Marquez, and I think that's Tim Tolan. All right, low snap, a nice job there to pick it up and kick it away. And great roll here for North Quincy. And it's going to stop at the Cohasset 29-yard line, and they're just letting it go as far as they could. Clock stops with four seconds to go. As we'll see on the replay here, that great roll. As we saw, the Raiders did a good job there. They had a couple guys in the ball, and uh, I'll say <laughs> pretty alert there by Ben Hudak. As we see, he's looking at Appleton. Appleton's following the ball, and good job by Hudak just to kind of stay on him in case he tries to do anything tricky or decides he wants to pick it up. But low snap, good job there by the Raiders to be able to get it off clean. The big thing was just being able to probably just to get it off. Just get it out of the other end here. Kohasset uh, will kneel it down. All right, so exciting first half here play at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Back and forth and uh, some nice defensive efforts here as well. Some penalties have uh, been uh, affected both teams. But nonetheless, we are at the half with Cohasset leading North Quincy by a score of 14 to seven. We'll take a timeout and back for second half coverage in just one moment. Welcome back everyone to Veterans Memorial Stadium. We're at the half. Cohasset leads North Quincy by a score of 14 to seven. Getting ready for the second half kickoff. North Quincy won the coin toss and elected to the further option to the second half. So they will receive here to begin the third quarter. Will Norjot will kick it away for the Skippers. 
And onside kick attempt here, and Kohas is going to have it, it looks like. And then they do. And look like it was recovered by Norjad himself. Take a look at the replay. Oh, might be a, a flag here or a procedure. The officials are talking to each other. Coach Ryan Craig is out on the field. I don't know if there might have been some uh, interference maybe. Up there they had a guy looking to try and jump on the ball. A tricky there, play there by Cohasset. And the North Island is not happy. I th think they felt that the Turner might have been interfered with or taken out away from the ball. And North Shorter guy, they're trying to run him on quick. Oh, nice hit there. All right, so it is going to be Cohasset ball. They're going to start at their own 48-yard line. We'll take a look at the replay here on the run here. Yeah, big hit there from number 52, Alan Guan. Uh, kind of makes out he was a little late getting onto the field. He was hustling on. <laughs> But uh, makes a big play. We see number 54, Michael Finney, also there. He's been making plays all night at defensive tackle. Gus Green, 28 yards rushing here tonight uh, for the uh, for Cohasset. Wildfire looking to pass, trying to get out of harm's way. And it's going to be a big sack here. He lets it go, forward pass. As you will see, it's going to forward pass, and they say it is. So they're going to say it's a forward pass, and I'm not sure if there was someone in the area. It looks like Coach Craig was maybe slinging an intentional grinding. We'll take a look at the replay here. Yeah, great pressure there. Number 84, Paul Glenn, left defensive end. Stays with it, comes from behind. And Ben Wallenjohn's coming up to make a play as well. Noah Baker. Uh, the only thing I can deem uh, or think of is that maybe they deemed he was out of the pocket. I know they've been messing around with intentional grinding rules for the past couple of years now for... High schools. I'm not sure if they changed it again this year. I think if I think if you're out of the pocket now, you can throw it away, like in NCAA. Okay. Where in the past, even if you were out of the pocket in NFHS rules, you still had to throw towards somebody. So I think they, they might say that he was out of the pocket, so he was he was all good with that. Pass down the side and is incomplete. Overthrew his intended receiver Liam Appleton, and I'll bring up a fourth down. For yeah, the skippers. Appleton ran, looked like more of a slant, and Wildfire looks like he was throwing more of a deeper post route there. But good job by the Raiders coming out. They hold class at three and out early after the surprise onside kick by the skippers. The defense did a good job in the first half for North. Uh, I mean, they let up a couple big plays, but they only allowed 129 yards of offense. Uh, so you take right. that. Almost looked like they were going to Throw a fake, fake kick, and a That's fair catch is called for, and there is interference. Or there's a flag thrown on the play. And down there for North Quincy, I, think I believe it was Sampson. number seven. Yeah, it was Nate Sampson. We'll take a look at the replay here, and you can see the skipper's defender was right down in front of him, <laughs> really preventing him from making any effort on the ball there. Yeah. But I, then the, the – You caught the tail end of it there. That Sampson was wa – he, he was waving pretty early that he was trying to fair catch that. So they do call interference there. So that 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 that'll be a good break for the Rays. That'll kind of push it out of their own end a little bit. Offense will be looking to create some momentum. They only had three first downs. Um, so that second quarter kind of was bogged down. They had a few three and outs after their touchdown drive. Their touchdown drive was kind of what they were looking for. They ran the ball a couple times, six yards here, six yards there, and then they hit on a big pass play to Nate Sampson. All right, so spot the ball at the 28-yard line, first and 10 for North Quincy. Enough up the middle there for North Quincy, and it was number 21 on the carry there, Ben Hudak, and they're going to spot him down at the 31, as you see on the replay. Hudak with another tough run there, trap play up the middle. Noah Baker comes across, kicks out the tackle. The Raider run rush attack, excuse me, uh, clicking a little bit better this week. They had 4.9 yards per carry in that uh, first half. You'll take that for almost five yards a carry. Um, so that's an area that they've shown improvement in this week. Uh, ben Hudak's a tough runner. He, he's making it work as well, keeping his legs moving. And they're going to go right back to him again. Over to the right side, and he's going to get a couple yards there before he was met there by Declan Lee. 
Also number 52 coming up there, Ben Henry, as we'll see in the replay. So they try to trap the other way here. Alan Guan comes across from right guard to the left side. And I mean, you just see Hudak, he refuses to go down. He keeps his feet moving. He kind of gets a couple extra yards. It was really a no gainer that he ended up managing to pull a couple yards out of just with the forward lean and leg drive. Uh, big third down here for the Raiders. It'd be key for them to get a first down. They've been struggling to kind of possess the ball a little bit, kind of help the defense out. Need to get to the 38-yard line for the first down. Going to go man coverage again here. they got plenty of opportunities. Galligan looking for something downfield. Nice coverage downfield. Throws and is complete. But it's going to be a, maybe back to the line of scrimmage there to Hudak. And, oh, excuse me, that was to number two, Taylor Marquez. Mar Marquez, excuse me. And there's a flag thrown in the play and a block in the back against North Quincy. Cohasset does a good job there. They they send pressure off the edge. Kind of the, the touchdown pass that the Raiders threw, they didn't really rush anybody, and Galligan was able to kind of sit back. Cohasset's made the adjustment. They've been sending a little bit more pressure up Galligan, especially off the edge, trying to force him back. Um, where Mikey doesn't step up as much. He likes to be able to go on the outside and make things happen where there's more space. They're, they're doing a good job trying to keep him boxed in, or if he's going to roll outside, he's got to roll backwards to do so. All right, so Cohasset declines the penalties to bring up fourth down. And nice kick there by North Quincy. Great kick there. And it's going to take a North Quincy roll up to the 25, still going. And the 20-yard line, and that's where it will stop. Long snapper, uh, Tommy Worth's on that, senior uh, receiver and D end. He's kind of the one of the special team uh, keys for the Red Raiders, or for, for the Raiders, excuse me. He's on kickoff, kick return, punt team, long snapper, long snaps on uh, PATs and all that. Uh, one of the important unsung heroes, you could say, of the North Quincy team. Uh, Almost like, you know, the Patriots look at Matthew Slater in that type of special teams role uh, where it provides that for North. All right, so first and 10 now for the Skippers. Get ball at their own 20-yard line. And it goes there to number 22, Gus Green. Nice pursuit there by North Quincy, as we'll see in the replay. Uh, maybe we'll get two yards on the play. So nice job there Mar by Marquez. Uh, Raiders got sucked inside a little bit, but... Appleton was double covered towards the Raiders sideline there. So uh, Marquez was able to kind of keep that play from bouncing out uh, even more. And she just had a loss of two yards on the, the play That's what kind of makes it tough for Quaz. Inside run, they try to bounce it outside, but they didn't really have the blockers there to support that. So North does a good job rallying to that. All right, second down and 12 now for Cohasset. And I think they're short of play here. They got and a timeout. Time out. Yep. Yeah. Time out. It looked like they might have been a receiver short. So another good break there for the Raiders. They got Cohasset backed up again. Uh, it's, it's been a, a defensive battle here, mainly. Uh, Yardage-wise, it's pr been pretty similar. Uh, first down-wise, uh, pretty close. Cohasset's had a few more first downs. They've been able to kind of drive it a little bit more. Each team's only had one turnover, uh, so both teams will be looking to kind of keep that where it is in the second half, especially if you're looking at it from North Quincy's perspective. they gotta, they got to drive the ball, but they got to not turn it over. They've done a good job kind of staying away from that for the most part outside of the first play. And then they got to get to the red zone. Uh, Cohasset, two of their, both of their scores, they got it inside the red zone, inside the 20, and they were able to score off it. The times where North's been able to kind of keep him back, keep him on there and uh, – their own end of the field, they've done great. Real quick, some stats from the half. Michael Wildfire, 6-14 passing for 82 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Wildfire, excuse me, Lee Appleton had uh, eight rushes for 38 yards. Green with 26 yards rushing. Appleton with a touchdown catch for 58 yards. And Cullinane has 17 yards uh, and two catches for a touchdown as well. We'll get to North Quincy in just a second. A wild foul in the shotgun, and a little trickery here. It's going to be Will McLaughlin on the reverse. Has some space down the sideline, and we'll see where they're going to mark him down at about the 28-yard line. We'll see here on the replay. 
Nice wrinkle there by Cohasset. Their heavy tendency to, is the toss to the three receiver side with the running back to the same side, and they play that up. They toss it over there, and they get nice little reverse action coming the other way. Spot them down at the 29-yard line. Bring up third and one now. Mikey Galligan, 45 yards passing and a touchdown for North Quincy. Ben Hudak, 38 yards rushing. Will Conley, 23 yards rushing. The Wildcat here. Nice job by North to stuff him. And try to see who came up there. Number 54 for North Quincy. First man in the backfield. Michael Finney, as we'll see in the replay. Michael Finney has been a great D tackle all year. Uh, looked like North might have sent some pressure because there was a little miscommunication up front. He came in unblocked, and that's what you got to do. If you get an opportunity to make a play, you got to step up and make one. Uh, Michael did that, and he's had a solid game both ways. He's playing center as well, so he's been doubling up. Uh, kicked away there by Cullinane. Great and job fair there catch by called Sampson. for by Nate Sampson. Great job there. Just the, the fair catch protects you, and b being able to catch it on in the air and not letting it roll, uh, such a huge factor. It's a nice little rugby punt from Situates Cullinan. Got great hang time on it. Well, so we've seen that play uh, become a little bit more popular here this year, Martin, in college and in high school as well, where you, you run out and kind of assess, do I want to maybe throw it, do I want to kick it or, or run it? And um, we've been seeing that happen. I, I, would, I would say I think most coaches want to call it. I don't know if you always want to leave it in the punter's hands. They might want to throw <laughs> it from the tw their own 20. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. But, uh, but, yeah, we've seen that a little bit more uh, happen here, uh, again, to, to run out there. Can't do that in the NFL. You, if, if you start to run, you got to run, or if yeah. you, you get, it's got to kick it. Uh, but, all right, and that last play was incomplete pass there for North Quincy. So bring up now a second down and 10 as North is at their own 35-yard line. North just hasn't been able to quite get on track. It looks like they're just a step out of sync tonight. But... Uh, fortunately for them, it's a, it's still just a one-score game. They're still right in it. Uh, it was a nice little concept there. They ran a little hitch to Samson on that last play, that first down play. That's going to be there for them whole second half. Conley in motion, and they give it to him. He crossed the 40-yard line, and he's going to be right out at the first down marker. We'll see with a – I should know, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds before that at about the 43, as we'll see here in the replay. Like they, well, they're going to even back it up more. They're going to say now the 42. The great job, uh, great run there by Conley. They hit that play in the first half for about a 15-yard gain, but it got brought back for a hold and uh, figured they'd come back to it at some point. So nice call there by the North Quincy staff. Brings up a third and three now for the Raiders. Let's see if they got, they got the corners are soft, if they can get that hitch again. That, that'll be right there for a first down. Over to Sampson, trying to set up a screen, but Sampson gets away from one tackler and can't get away from the second. Nice tackle there by number 14, Will McLaughlin, as we'll see in the replay. And it looks like North Quincy's going to be just shy of the first down. It's going to be a yard short. Uh, let's see if they decide to punt it away or keep the offense out. Galligan is still out there, so they might try quick option here of a sneak, perhaps. Yep, they got... Yeah, they, they run in three backs. They go heavy. Oh, unfortunate play there for North. Let's see if right, Mikey can get it. He's close. He's, he's going to be, yeah, he's going to be very close there. And they're going to say he steps out of bounds at the 45. And it's, just, and it's a first down. The official comes in and marks a first down. We'll see in the replay. So it looked like cadence-wise, not sure. The, um, the snap got up there. Not sure if uh, it was on the right count, but. Uh, Mike Gallagher does a good job to pick up the loose ball. And you can see he's quite an athlete. He's got some speed to him. Uh, very good lacrosse player in the spring as well. Very talented. Uh, and those skills kind of translate uh, in lacrosse. He plays up an attack, so he's got to dodge and uh, use lots of shifty moves in tight, tight space, make people miss, and helps him out of quarterback, definitely. All right, first and ten for the Raiders. Galgan over to the right side, incomplete, was looking for Panaridi, and it goes incomplete. Good read, good decision there from Galgan. Just a, a deep out from Panaridi, a 10 yard out right at the stick. Uh, he was open, they just, just barely missed that connection. They're just right there. Um, the guys are getting open. Uh, Mike got some 
uh, got enough time to let that go. Um, and the fact that it was towards the sideline made it a shorter throw. It didn't hang in the air too long. Yeah, second down here. They got three receivers up top. One of them's an H back, and they got Nate Sampson to the bottom, singled up. All right, they give it to Hudak. Hudak was trying to go up to the left, gets thrown down. It'll be a loss there. And they coming up to make the play there was Henry Richard for the skippers, as we'll see on the replay. Nice play by Richard. They brought Taylor Marquez across to kick out. Uh, Hudak thought he might have had something outside, but unfortunately, uh, classic skipper defense was able to make that tackle on the outside. Uh, that's a play you'd probably like to see Hudak kind of plant his foot and just get upfield, and even though it, there's not a big hole there, you kind of take what you get, you know, no gain or one or two as opposed to losing a yard. It's going to back it up now, third and 11. So on number 54, Michael Finney, the center, leading the team out to the line of scrimmage. He said third and 11 now for the Raiders. Trying to set up his screen, and it's complete to Hudak. Well, a nice play there by the skippers. Number 50 coming up there was Christian Steinmetz to make the play, as we'll see in the replay. Nice play there by Steinmetz. I think he was at inside linebacker maybe there. Uh, they were just one block away right there. I mean, if he's if Hudak breaks that, he has a good sh uh, chance, I think, of the first hand. He had a convoy in front of him. And I believe, I believe Hudak is down on the field. And I believe this is a cramp, just the way they're holding out his his leg there. Hopefully that's all it is. Yeah, but Brody Baker was out there trying to stretch <laughs> him out. Uh, the athletic trainer, Brennan Gano, out there now. He's trying to stretch it out. Uh, Ben's been playing both ways all night. Uh, he's been battling, playing safety, playing running back. Uh, he's, you know, those guys are the ones that attract kind of the most yardage, having to cover. He got some time here at the fourth down play, though. <laughs> get him stretched out. Hopefully he'll be ready to go by the defensive series. The next defensive series. But the Raiders have sent their punt team on. Number 34, Michael Nista, back to receive the punt. When he's had time, he's uh, been able to get a good leg on it. High kick. It's going to be fielded at the 15-yard line by Norjot and Norjot's going to get up to the 25 yard line as we'll see in the replay here again nice hang time there on the kick and coverage downfield coverage downfield we had number 15 Dom Gonzalez uh, senior uh, as you see 81 uh, Tommy Wirtz was down there pretty, uh, pr pretty quickly as well uh, number 4 Ariel White and number 5 Tim Tolan uh, both in on that tackle as well And off to Green. Green trying to get away from harm's way, but cannot. Great job there by North Quincy. Looking at the bottom of the pile and wrapping up his feet was Taylor Marquez, as you'll see in the replay. Great job there by Marquez. He's the outside linebacker on that side. Does a great job coming up. And looked like that might have been number 52, Alan Guan, as well, on that initial stop as well. <laughs> An interesting change here by Cohasset after the first couple series they had Appleton in the backfield taking the bulk of the carries. He's split out as a receiver now for the past couple quarters. Right now again he is up top by himself. And pass was looking for him but it goes incomplete. Pass was thrown a little bit ahead of um, Appleton and we'll take a look at the replay. You can see there how they could not connect. Nate Sampson right there on the coverage as well. He was coming up to make a break on that. Uh, making sure he doesn't get beat deep. Uh, it's a, just an interesting use for Cohasset there, the, using him, hope, hoping to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups. It, it appears on the outside. <laughs> so the officials are blowing the, the ball's been rolling around down there. Looks like one of the one of the Raiders maybe was trying to get it put back, and you know where the official thought they were. With the ball. So I think ball he might have accidentally around. kicked it as he was yeah. up, up there. And All right, third and 13 now for Cohasset. Wildfire looking down the right side of the field, and it is caught, but it'll be out of bounds. Liam Appleton out of bounds there, so bring it fourth and long now for Cohasset. 
the, even with Appleton making that catch out of bounds, you know, Samson does a good job. He squeezes him to the sideline there. He makes it so that he, if the throw was on target, as we see in the replay, there's really not a lot of room for him to make that play anyway. Samson's right all over, and he kind of just lets him go out of bounds. Raiders get good, good pressure up the middle again. And North Quincy is going to get away from this and takes a North Quincy bounce and getting there to stop the ball is Cohasset and they're going to spot it down at the North Quincy 49-yard line. That's where the Rays will take over. Another good series here for the North Quincy defense uh, and this will set up a great opportunity for them. The ball at midfield. Opportunity to really drive the ball. They're not backed up so really their whole offense is on the menu at this point. You see, they've, they've had some opportunities pushing the ball down the field. Uh, they've just missed, but I, they're going to keep going after it. I actually spot the ball at midfield instead, so North Quincy will take it over from there. Nice counter play. Up the middle there, Hudak with the ball, and he's going to get up to the 45-yard line, make it the 44, as we'll see here in the replay. Conley with the successful jet earlier, and now they're going to come back with the counter. Alan Guan, right guard, is going to pull across along with Tail Marquez. He's got like a little H-back pulling through the hole as well. Great first down play there for North. Gets it to the second and four, and that's kind of another one of those downs where now you, get anything, you can either run or pass. Everything's kind of on the menu here. Second down and four now for North. Hudak gets the carry over to the left side and let's see where they mark him down. And they're gonna mark him down at the 30, excuse me, 42 yard line. So it's gonna be third and short. The Raiders are gonna go a little bit heavier here. It looks like they might, uh, they're gonna try and power through for the first down. Same action on that last run play as we saw for the Raiders as the first down play. Uh, this time they just ran it without the jet motion. Um, they get the same kind of blocking up front. They had uh, Alan Guan kicking out. They had Marquez leading through the hole there. Uh, having a lot of success on the ground tonight in terms of being able to be efficient and get four or five yards to pick up. All right, third and two now for North Quincy. Full house backfield now for North. Galligan hard count. Play action fake, he's gonna keep it himself. Great play here by North Quincy. And he's gonna have the first down as he rolls out to the left side. And he's gonna get knocked out of bounds at about the 35 yard line as we see here on the replay. Nice shot by Galligan. Just his athletic ability allows you to be able to do this. And uh, must be something the North Quincy coaches saw. Usually if you get a defensive end on the backside that really likes to get aggressive and really squeeze it down if he sees the run going away from him, it opens up that bootleg. And someone of uh, Mike's athletic talent uh, opens it up right there and they get a huge gain on third down. And mark him out of bounds at the 36 yard line. So first and 10 for North from the 36. 157 left to go in the third quarter. Pitch over to Hudak, over to the right side and nice tackle there by Liam Appleton as we'll see in the replay. Appleton came up there and Hudak had no chance to get away. Yeah, a couple guys ran into each other up front too, blocking wise. Uh, I think someone was pulling and uh, he got kind of hit on the way by, so he didn't have that extra blocker out there. Real quick, while we have a second, thank our crew coming out here tonight to make this game possible. On camera, we have Ryan McWade. On replay, Brian Cox. On audio, we have Joshua Danter. Graphics, Anna El Torre. Our engineer, Chris Potter. And our director, Peter Doherty. Second and 13 now for North Quincy. Galgan looking down field, looking down field and it is incomplete, was looking for number 13, Cam Sampson, as we'll see in the replay. Sampson had a step on his man initially, but it was a nice recovery there by Cohasset. Uh, he Sampson does a good job too. Uh, middle of field safety, usually you're not gonna have that post route open, but he does a good job getting behind that safety. Uh, Cohasset been playing the safety up a little bit uh, not as deep as a, a typical free safety would at maybe 10, 12, 13 yards. He's been playing up closer to 8 to 10. Uh, but they're still playing man coverage, so they get their chances downfield. Samson did a good job beating his corner. 
and get behind the defense. All right, third down now for North Quincy. Galligan going down the field for Conley, and Conley comes back but just couldn't bring it in. And a flag's going to be thrown on the play here. And I believe there's a pass interference on number 22, Gus Green. We'll take a look at the replay and see. You can see Conley right here. Uh, tough break there. Uh, I think they're just going to say that Conley was trying to come back and the Cohasset defender Green there was just kind of, he was more in the way. He didn't. Uh, necessarily push him. The pass interference is always a, a tough call now where it's 50-50 and any time there's contact somebody's looking to either offense or defense somebody's looking for a flag. Nice so, play. Put the ball up the to, Put the ball up to the 24 yard line. It'll be 15, 15 yards in the first. So good job there. They're north again they're pushing downfield if you get man coverage and you get guys that can beat it, uh, they got opportunities down the field to push it. Oh. Hudak on the carry over to the left side. Ben Hudak the and they're going to get him a couple yards on the play up to the 22-yard line. Look at the, yeah, 22, as we'll see in the replay. Gohasa does a nice job up front here. Second I couldn't tell who that was. Number 55, maybe? This just in. Final yeah, 55, uh, Dan Baker. He did a good job. That one game, a, a good hit. He was coming across to trap him. Got a good initial hit, but uh, Dan Baker does a good job for Kohasi. He kind of just shuts him out of the way and is able to make the tackle in the hole. North Quincy's going to go back to a heavy look. Galgan under center, pitches it to Conley. Conley up to the right side. Nice run here by Conley. Gets another push forward there. And he'll get up to the 15 yard line, maybe to the 14, as you got an extra push there from Brody Baker, as we'll see in the replay. Clock will stop for the first down. Yep, they're going to signal first down at the 14. So, oh no, it's not a first down. He, he signaled first, but I, I was going to say that's short. Oh, maybe it is past it. I'm looking at the wrong yard line. <laughs> oh, and there's a, a penalty marker on the. There's a hold on yeah. North Quincy. Uh, I, I looking at the stick, thinking it's at the 10, but it was at the 15. And Coach Craig's trying to get, looks like he's trying to get a call from the official in terms of who it might have been on. Uh, so that marks the ball back to the 32-yard line. So the clock's going to start up again here. We'll see if the Raiders try and get it off before the end of the quarter. And Galligan pointed to the clock. He saw that and looked to the sideline. And head coach Ryan Craig just said, let it tick down. And that is the end of the third quarter of play. This will give them a, 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 you know, an extra minute to kind of think about what they want to do here as well. Second and 17 in terms of trying to maybe just get it down with a third and five, six, uh, manageable. Kind of push forward. Yeah. Good run there by Conley on that last play. North's doing a much better job on this drive, being able to just kind of keep the ball. They get a first down on the ground. They get a first down with the penalty. And sometimes offensively, that's just what you need. You just need to be able to have the ball for a little bit, possess it, and make the defense, the classic defense, have to work. Uh, the North Quincy defense has done a great job, especially in the second half coming out. I don't even know if Classic has a first down in the second half yet. Um, I don't know how, do you have how many they have so far, John? I know they had seven at the half. Yeah, so they, I think they're still at seven, right? Uh, yeah, it looks like they're still at first yeah. down. So we're just going to take a look at the replay of that last play here. Um, so you can see... And I'm not sure if we'll oh, see. Oh, you know what? They so there was a something up top. They might have they might have called like an incidental kind of a high low block there. So somebody went down the cut. It looked like or slipped. Gotcha. Okay. And so, and somebody from Cohasset kind of got pushed over there. Yeah, if we go, keep going back. Yeah, right up at the top there. So if we There's can a keep Cohasset rolling it back down. in into the truck there. I don't so know if we can roll it back a little. It's it used, you know. Oh, here we go. Sometimes you you cut by accident there. Yeah, it looks like. So, yeah. Uh, an, an unfortunate break, and it might have been just something where they deemed, you know, the, the guy over on the left ended up pushing him. But. All right, we come back to live action here to begin the fourth quarter. Galligan looking to pass, looking, looking. Nice coverage downfield there. 
And Galligan, let's see if he's just trying to throw this away. And actually, he had a man there, Nate Sampson, but it is out of bounds. A lot of effort there for North Quincy, and especially Mikey Galligan to try to make something happen there. Let's take a look at the replay real quick. Uh, he keeps plays alive here as we see clean pocket, nothing there initially. <laughs> Linebacker comes. Uh, good job there by Brody Baker to kind of protect that backside as he rolls out. And if uh, that was that was almost an amazing play there by Nate Sampson. Like you said, I don't know whether Mikey was trying to throw that away or not, but Nate almost made a great play on it. Yeah, initially I just thought he was just, you know, trying to just get it out of bounds as far as he could, but Sampson came up there and made it look closer than it was. So it brings up third down and long now for North Quincy. I, I would imagine this is four down territory if they can get some form of yardage here. Yeah, Conley has a wing to the left. Galligan looking. Looking for Conley down the field and it's caught. Did he stay in bounds? And he did. Nice catch there by Will Conley at the 12 yard line and it's a first down for North Quincy. Oh, what a great play there by Conley. Ran a wheel route. So we see on the replay here, Glass has been playing man coverage all night, and uh, that's a good matchup. You got Will Conley coming out on the wheel. <laughs> oh, I, he, the he, toe tap. That's it. Appleton was right there coming over the top. Almost got that, but what a great job there by Conley. Focus and concentration. North coming up to the line. They're going to go heavy again. Now they give it to Conley. Conley has go right, cuts back to the left. And with forward progress, they're going to spot him down at about the eight-yard line. And they blow the whistle. Conley still hasn't gone down yet. Take a look at the replay here on that play. I think there was just some extra curriculums off the ball, so teammates open each other out, just clear it up. Yep. Um, Conley cuts it back there. North having success so far with that power eye tonight, and they looks like they're bringing some an extra lineman or some extra weight over to that right side. All right, so they do spot the ball down at the eight yard line. North Quincy can still pick up a first down here, so it's second down and six. There goes the same backfield, they're gonna have a balanced line here. Ariel White and Ben Hudak are the up backs. Play action fake, Galligan has some space, he's gonna run it. Nice cut there, gets it to the five yard line, and let's see where they spot him down. Looks like they're gonna spot him down at about the two yard line, right at the first down marker. We're gonna have time for a measurement, but we'll take a look at the replay first here as Galligan runs to the right side. Great job, yeah, they, got, they got Cohasset again. Aggressive defensive end there, able to boot to the outside. They had a flat route from Paul Glenn, and is probably kind of some sort of of a quarterback kind of pass run option. If you get the flat, take it. If not, just let take off with it. And Mikey does a great job. Puts his foot in the ground, too, with that juke move to go forward. And, and he's going to be just shy there of the first down. But half the length of the football. As you can see, the rain coming down here now at the stadium. So just picking back up. It stopped right at the end of the, near the end of the first half. Halftime, it cleared up, and now it's coming back again. So, and now they've brought out the chains further and they've moved the ball as we see the rain picking up. It's a great shot. No wind, you see it's coming straight down, so that's good f in terms of uh, kicking extra points that are going to count here. Oh, so they must be, I met, they must have used the chains to uh, place the ball, I guess, yeah. on the hash. Yep. North can come out heavy backfield again. They got, they got two shots here to get one yard for the first. Galligan keeps it himself, gets a push from behind. Touchdown, North Quincy. Great job there by the offensive line to get a push there as Galligan went in over the left guard for the touchdowns. We'll see you in the replay. Kind of goes right behind number 54, Mike Finney as well. The center, he's been making uh, big plays all night. I think uh, right guard, Alan Guan, number 52. That was an excellent offensive drive there for the Raiders, and that's... That's good offense in terms of, like, philosophically. You're looking to get the ball. You want to get first downs, possess the ball. You get it into the red zone. And then when you get to the red zone, you want to score touchdowns. You want to get six. You're not settling for three. So the textbook perfect stuff there from North. And that touchdown brings them right back into it. 14-14 with 10-15 left. We've 
mentioned the defense has stepped up here all night long, especially in this second half. They haven't allowed a first down. They've been uh, keeping Cohasset at bay, and the offense is finally able to get some momentum, get a score. It feels like the, the momentum's shifting here a little bit now, and maybe North's got some confidence back to them. Alvin Nicola kicked that extra point through the uprights, and again, as you said, we are tied at 14 with 10-15 left to go here in the game. As, as you said, I think the momentum has swung. North Quincy had done a nice job there, held Cohasset a couple times in the third quarter, uh, and then a nice long drive there for North Quincy to come down the field and put the seven points on the board. Uh, it was uh, 50 yards for 11 plays, uh, so North went down there and again... Yeah. By far their longest drive of the night, too. Like, that's great stuff. They they got a couple penalties, uh, which helped them out a little bit, and then they were able to keep the ball on the ground, keep it rolling. Um, it's just a great job. Now we got Alvin Nicola set the kickoff here for the Raiders. Right, line drive kick there by Nicola. Field at the 20-yard line Looks like by Green. Green. Yep. Green over to the left sideline, makes a couple men miss, and they're going to fall forward up to about the 38-yard line, make it the 37, as we'll see in the replay. Uh, we've been calling his name all night on special teams, Tommy Wirtz, uh, down there in, in the mix, making that tackle again. Um, as you see Green here, he's going to take it up the left side. Wirtz does a good job. He tries to keep his contain on the outside. Who else was over there? Number 24 for the Raiders, Ryan Wirtz. Uh, so the Wirtz brothers in there uh, doing a good job uh, on the kickoff team. We'll see if Cohasset makes any adjustments to their offense here. They've had Appleton lined up as receiver uh, for pretty much the past two quarters. Now he's in the backfield again. All right, and they do hand it off to Liam Appleton, and he's trying to run for his life there. Finds some space all the way on to the other side of the field now. And another, mix, another miss there at the 50-yard line. And it'll finally get brought down in North Quincy territory up to the North Quincy 47-yard line. What a run there by Liam Appleton, as we'll see in the replay. Oh, North was, yeah. <laughs> Appleton just does such a good job yeah, evading tackles. He evades one, evades two. Yeah. North was there. They just got to come up and make the play. Appleton does a good job, and I'll tell you, uh, Cohasset line does a good job. They get downfield to get back in front of him as well. He just makes stuff happen. I don't know whether they call it or if he just cuts back on his own, but... Uh, he's got a lot of ability, and it looks like now to get their offense going, they're going to put their best player, give him the ball in the backfield. And they give it to him again. North Quincy right there this time to bring, bring him down. Coming up there to make the initial stop was Ben Wallenjohn. Ben Wallenjohn, Paul Glenn, the two DNs kind of squeezed that down. Good job. We'll have to keep an eye out as well, if uh, make sure they don't get too overly aggressive. I'm sure that uh, normally they have quarterback responsibilities or somebody on the or an outside line, linebacker will have a quarterback responsibility in the event that he pulls it. Uh, he's sh Wildfire hasn't done it yet tonight, but if they get too aggressive, they'll pull it out. No gain on that last play. Wildfire, little throw there. And so I didn't really hear any whistles or whatnot. North Winds jumped on the ball, but I guess they're going to say it's incomplete. And it'll be third down. We'll take a look at the replay and see what happened there. Yeah. Setting up crossing routes there, pick play, and it was one coming across. Receiver thought he was open. But Wildfire had to kind of escape. North Quincy pressure. Coming up strong here. Third and ten. Raiders looking to hold. It was close there, uh, but Wildfire, you could see his hand was empty as he was going forward there, so they're going to say it was a forward pass. Now that we got a pass situation, Alton's by himself up top. Wildfire pass is complete down the right sideline to number four. That's Shane Mulcahy, and Mulcahy will pick up a big first down there for the Skippers all the way up to the North Quincy 27-yard line, as we'll see on the replay. Good job by the Cohasset offense. We saw up top uh, Apple Fires double covered. Uh, uh, Appleton, excuse me, double covered. So Wildfire just goes to the opposite side, to the three receiver side, and he finds an open Shane Mulcahy for the first down, finds that soft spot. Mulcahy, the, kind of their number two receiving threat, if you will. He's got nine to ten catches this year. He's got a touchdown as well. He had a great cutback there on that play to pick up an extra ten yards as well. Quick handoff there to Will Norsgott. 
Norjot over to the left side, breaks a tackle, he's still on his feet, 10 yard line, and get knocked out of bounds at the five yard line. A huge run there by Norjot. As we'll see in the replay, he'll set up a first in goal for the Skippers. It was a good cut there. The Raiders tried to box that in, prevent it from going outside, and Norjot does a good job. He put his foot down, cut it up inside the tackles block, and then bounce it right back outside again. Uh, textbook jet run there for Kohasa. It's going to put him inside the 10. Goal to go from the 5. They're going to go Wildcat. And Appleton keeps it and looks like getting up to the, the one yard line it looked like. And we'll see where they spot the ball. And they do spot it at the 1. We'll see if they stick with it. I think that Kohasa just might stick with it. Direct snap to him. And see what they can get out of it. Yep, they're going to stay a wildcat with Appleton back. The lead blocker, Gus He got hit in the backfield. And Ball, balls loose. I don't know if Appleton got it. We'll see what the officials say. They're going to say he's down at the one. We'll see at the replay here, and it'll be third and goal. That ball came out right at the end, too. I think he was already down, but you can just tell kind of with that rain and how slippery he is. He might have tried to reach for it, which is always risky. You never really want to reach out in a pile just for the fear of the ball getting knocked out or especially in these conditions where it's raining it's slippery all right so third and goal now from the one appleton over to the right side now trying to find some space and he goes in for the score yeah we got a flag though so it might be coming back that all right flag yeah, is and down it is yep. two. it's gonna be a hold against yep. cohasset so that will come back say so he was slow playing it to the outside it looked like there was somebody out on the edge that might have been trying to get out there. Yep, as you can see, right up top. Defensive end getting held. I think that was Paul Glenn that drew the hold. Uh, trying to get pressure on the outside. He was held by the tackle. All right, so I'll move the ball back to the 11-yard line. They're going to call it the 10. They're going to keep. No, they got Wildfire uh, back into quarterback. And... Not All right, sure not too sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, I thought someone was calling a timeout, but. <clears throat> All right, so see, it's. One of the favorite routes here for Glass. It's a corner to the back of the end zone. And trying to do that play right now, and. Yeah, flags out. Yeah, we're going to have pass interference in the end zone. Take a look at the replay real quick here. Pass was intended for Shane Mulcahy. North was all over that, uh, unfortunately. Uh, Taylor Marquez just didn't get his head around, and that's kind of what draws the flag there. Uh, North was all over, as we see number five, Tim Tolan. He's the free safety. Uh, Cohasset looking to attack that back pylon with the corner out. So that's going to put the ball down, down to the five. And it is not an automatic first down. It is just half the distance to the goal here, so... That's kind of one of the differences from the NFL. The NFL, you got uh, automatic first down on down at like what the one of the two. Yep. So. Yeah, if it's in the end so zone. So for here, it's, it's just uh, it's kind of <clears throat> no harm, no foul. Too much for the Raiders. Just have to do this with the goal. They're playing third down again. So just Alton in the backfield watching. Oh no, he's out wide. Excuse over me. Over to the right side, and it's incomplete. Nice attempt there by Kohasa, but they could not bring it in. So it'll be fourth and goal now for the Skippers. They're going to change units here. They're going to go for the field goal, it looks like. To say, I thought it was Appleton in the backfield initially. A couple times they've kind of play action and rolled him out into the flat or screen for him. All right, John Shannon will come out to attempt the field goal. And from a Kohas perspective, it's about as good as it's going to get wind-wise and position-wise, right down the middle. 23-yard field goal attempt. And it is blocked there by North Quincy. And that, that should be dead right away. I don't Oh, see, North Quincy's picked up the, the ball there. I mean, they'll take it. <laughs> and looks like it was uh, number three, Marquez Rodriguez-Smith. We'll see where they actually spot the ball. And if it was all the way up to, and they do, they're going to say it's all the way up at the Cohasset 40-yard line. And that's where North Quincy will take it over. I thought in NFHS it was dead, but I couldn't. But I guess I'm wrong. They let it play on here, so nice job. 
Heads up play for Rodrigo Smith. You play it to the whistle. Uh, he does a good job. Side steps there. Cuts up the sideline. Uh, he's one tackle away from that too. Great job there by the Raiders special teams. They've gotten a lot of pressure up the middle all night on, on punts and kicks. And they finally were able to cash in on that there. Totally flips the field now. Goes from backed up inside their own 10. And now they get it on the 40. And they're going to go heavy. And they're going to pound it right at Cohasset. All right, Conley with the ball. Kicks it outside to the left. And he's going to get up to the 35-yard line. And we'll see where they mark him out of bounds. And the referee still walking up there. Trying to see where they mark him out of bounds. Looks like they're going to be at the 32-yard line, as we'll see in the replay. So nice job there. It was just a lead play up the middle. Everybody kind of got sucked up in. Conley was able to bounce it outside. Show some good strength there, breaking off that arm tackle. Just a yard short. Yep, they mark him out of bounds at the 31, so it'll be second down and one now for North. <coughs> Galligan keeps himself, pushes right up the middle, has the first down easily there for North Quincy, and they'll put him down to 26. Great job there by Mikey. I don't, I don't know if it was called or whether he audible to it, but there was an immediate hole right on that right side off the center, that A gap between the center and the guard, and take advantage of it, get the first down, keeps the clock moving. Uh, important thing here for the Raiders is uh, they got to get points on this drive. Again, ball at the 26. Again, Galligan under center. Conley with the ball. He's going to get hit in the backfield and brought down. Looks like there's number 70 coming up to make the initial hit. Henry Richards, we'll see in the replay. He's playing that stand up end position, so came through unblocked on that side. Uh, but he's been pretty aggressive. They got him. A, they got him once on that last drive where Mikey was able to boot out off of that action. Class will have to be alert to that. I'm sure that will be an option again in the North Quincy toolbox. If they need it. Loss of one on the play. So second down and eleven now. They're gonna spread it back out. They're gonna go three receivers to the bottom. And you got Nate Sampson up top by himself. See if they attack that one on one again. They're going to give it to Hudak. Hudak over to the right side. Cuts back up in the middle. Nice job there by Hudak. Gets across to the 20-yard line. And we'll see where they mark him down. Looks like at the 19, as we'll see in the replay, will be up a third and short. Great job. Raiders have had a lot of success with this power scheme. They bring a offensive lineman, usually a guard, across. And then the H-back coming across, leading the way through the hole as well. This is Noah Baker again coming through. I think that was Taylor Marquez as the H-back. The offensive line for the Raiders has really come come alive here in the second half. Third and four now. They spot him down at the 20-yard line. Galligan, they've been, again, excuse me, under center. Play action fake. Galligan over to the left side on the bootleg. Has the first down and more at the 15. And we've got to bounce at the 10-yard line for North Quincy. Right on cue, that bootleg. Like he's so dangerous. And he's got that ability, just straight line. Class, it didn't. Uh, Cullen didn't got. He didn't really get sucked in too much, but uh, Mikey's got some momentum going ahead of him. He's tough to catch. Uh, he's Forty wise, like no speed wise, he's right up there. He's top probably four or five with within the program. So he's he's not your typical, say you know, pro style, old school pro style, I guess. Now <laughs> these days, where you know they're not as nimble, or like Brady, where he's not really running around. Right. Mikey provides that dual threat option for the offense. All right, first and goal from the 10 now for North. They give it to Conley. Conley trying to bounce it out to the left. And he's going to get it one, maybe two yards on the play. We'll see where they spot him out of bounds. And they're going to say on the eight, as we'll see in the replay. So Cahass is doing a good job. They're plugging up the middle, and North Quincy's doing a good job uh, being able to bounce it off, off tackle to the outside, get some extra yardage. They're going to spot it at the eight. It is goal to go, so the Raiders will uh, have three shots here. Well, two shots at least at the end zone. I don't know uh, what their field goal option looks like if they would go for one. But they're going to stay with the heavy backfield, and they're going to try and pound it in. Galligan looking, was looking to pass, but there's nothing there, trying to get out of harm's way, and he finally throws it down in the field, and it goes incomplete. 
Well, he's got everybody on the edge of his seat. He's, <laughs> he's going around, pump fake, rolling back. I, they, that's another one of those. I don't know if he was throwing it away. Uh, they tried to, that boot action again. They had Paul Glenn leaking out into the flat. Kowasik was up to the task. And Mike's able just to get that away. And it's flirting close with danger there, but uh, does a good job. It's, it's, you know, either North Quincy gets it or nobody gets it. Out of bounds there. We got third and goal now from the eight. We'll see if North is going to stay with the heavy backfield, heavy line, or if they're going to try and spread it back out. Again, ball at the eight yard line, third and goal now for the Raiders. They're going to spread it out. Glass, it's pressed up here. They're going to get man coverage, so maybe some crossing routes, something quick. Galligan looking, has some space up the middle. Gets up to the five yard line, and. He's going to be short at about the three-yard line where he's going to get hit down, as we'll see at the replay. Well, they had double slant up top. They didn't see what they had uh, closest to us. But hole open up in the middle for Mike. I'd like to see him lower his shoulder there. He could, took that hit kind of high. Um, but decision time for the Raiders. Let's see. They get the ball at about the two-and-a-half on the hash. We'll see whether they... Have uh, it's PAT range, so that Nicole has shown that he's got plenty of leg to kick it if they choose to kick it, yeah, or I they might go for the touchdown. I think they're going to let the clock wind down, maybe uh, so yeah, call I think, the timeout. Yeah, they're going to let that do. I could see uh, Coach Craig came up and talked to the official and said he wants to run it down, and the uh, official went to the back judge who was keeping the time. They had the play clock time, so the clock stops with 2:50 left to go here in the game. And that North Quincy, that's their first timeout of the second half. We'll see, it looks like they're going to keep the offense out there based on what they're, how they're kind of meeting on the field. Big play here, 250, balls on the two. Nope, oh, they're going to go field goal. They're going to change some units here. Nicola, I, no, I don't want to jinx it, but he's he's been doing great on the PAT team this year. Um, the operation's done pretty good for the most part. We got uh, Tommy Wirtz. He's been the long snapper. He had that one little slip up earlier where the ball slipped. But ever since then, they've been able to get good snaps back there. As we look at the replay from that third down, Galligan just opened up in the middle. It was a big hit there by Jack Harry's number three for the Skippers. All right, so the ball is at the left hash mark. That's the only thing that kind of makes us semi-complicated, I think. Is, right, right. Uh, left hash, and, and you you do practice it. You practice field goal, you know, multiple times a week. But it's always different when you're in the game, and the, the hash is always the tricky part in terms of being able to line it up. Well, they're going to go for it here. Yep. They got Gallagher under center, three men in the backfield. Play action fake, Gallagher looking. Oh, he's got Has eight. Sampson, and he throws it, and it's touchdown, North Quincy! Threaded the needle there at the last second, and Sampson brings it down for the six points, as we'll see in the replay. Great job there by North. They, they had the kicker in the huddle during the timeout, so they, they must have changed their mind last second. That's it was alert. Defensive end over there did a great job making sure Mikey wasn't coming out there. And oh, just got it past him. That's it. My, Mike took a little bit. He had to kind of come back, get his momentum going forward there. That Nate broke off really well initially to get open to that back corner or to the front end. What a throw there by Mike Gallagher. Connection to Nate Sampson. Second touchdown catch of the night. And they say extra point is no good. Must have been just just wide so there. We'll take a look it at had the plenty of leg. Yeah, it was definitely, I'm not sure if it was just wide to the right. Let's see if we can see how the ball disappears behind the, uh, uh, maybe it was wide to the left. Kind of tough to tell there. Mm, yeah. yeah, we, we got like the weird angle here where it's kind of tough to tell either way. Uh, in any event, the, the important thing is that the Raiders get six instead of three. Right, right. I think, uh, especially with the way Cohasset on their last drive, they kind of woke up a little bit. To force them to have to score a touchdown now is huge. So 2.41 left to go in the game. North Quincy takes their first lead of the game, 20-14. to 14. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I don't think anybody got the ball out of the net after the ref had to go back and get it. <laughs> so, big play here for the Raiders special teams unit. They got to minimize the damage on the return here. Cohasset's got a couple good run-ups. Raiders got to go make a tackle downfield. Nice right field by the up man. Oh, Number nice seven, tackle. ball came oh, loose. Ball. And North Quincy thinks they have it. We'll see. Ball was, came loose and... Uh, they, they, yeah. Somebody signaled Cohasset, I think. The black hat signaled Cohasset. Yeah, we'll take a look at the replay real quick yeah, here. The number 70 popped up uh, for uh, Cohasset, excuse me, Henry Richard. Jack oh. Cullinane took it at the 28-yard line. and I think that was Taylor Marquez. He was right there in the initial tackle. Yep, yep. he, he might have gotten that punch out. Rodriguez Smith in there, Ben Wallen John in there. Oh, man, tough break there for oh. North Quincy. They had three guys right around it, but they couldn't come up with it. All right, so they spot good. the ball at the 36-yard line. A good move there to squib it, kind of eliminate the air time in the return. Going to go one-on-one -on -one with Appleton. Nothing and there. Great big job. play there by North Quincy, number 54. Michael Finney with a sack on the replay. Flag thrown on the play, though, as well. Yeah, we got a hold on the outside, I think, maybe. Because Finney got held in the back. He broke through, and he had a hand on, the, on his back plate. And they're going to decline that penalty. That Finney has been living in the Cohasset backfield all night. It's, it's exactly what you expect out of out of your senior. Uh, one of the leaders on this team. He's a two-year starter. He's kind of one of those guys you expect to make big plays when the opportunity is there. And Mike's come through. So North declines the penalty. Ball goes back to the 30-yard line, second down and 16. Wildfire looking down the left side of the field, and it is caught down there by Liam Appleton. What a catch there by Appleton all the way down to North Quincy's 40-yard line. That was a big-time throw there. They motioned out to get the one-on-one -on -one matchup that they wanted, and Wildfire with good placement there right over the shoulder of Nate Sampson. That's going to be a battle to be looking at uh, for the rest of this drive. Sampson's been tasked with with the tough assignment of covering Appleton. A lot of times one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes he has help, but a lot of times he hasn't. Gonna go to Appleton again. All right, ball is caught and he gets hit right away, but it'll be another gain up to the 35 yard line as we'll see in the replay. So the adjustment there, they motion the cross. The safety, I think it was Tim Tolan, he cheated over to that side a little bit, or Ben Hudak rather. He cheated over a little bit to give Sampson some help on any deep route. One minute, 50 seconds to go here in the game. Second down and about five now for Cohasset. They're going to go with that look again. Trying to set up the screen, and it is almost intercepted there by North Quincy. It got tipped, I believe, by Wallenjohn. And we'll take a look at the replay here. Yeah, Wallenjohn's the defensive end up top. Yeah, left tackle kind of gives it engage. And oh, there you go. There's the volleyball skill from Ben yeah. Wallenjohn. He's 6'3, <laughs> 6'4. Six, Great athleticism. He's got long arms too, so his wingspan's you know longer than I think his frame is. Uh, great job there. Bring up third and five. Nice play there because Kohasa had some space downfield there if that pass was completed. Yeah, they're gonna. Oh. Wildfire looking, looking downfield, getting pressured, and he's gonna get sacked and brought down there. Wallenjohn. Also over there was number 66, Brody Baker, as we'll see in the replay. Great job there, Wallen John coming through. Beats his guy to the outside. Paul Glenn forced the initial step up there. Uh, Brody Baker comes up to help finish it off as well. That's going to bring up fourth down. Uh, now, fortunately. <laughs> I'll say, yeah. Oh, so North Quince is going to call a timeout. Wallen John's helmet came off, yes. so he was forced to come off for a play. Uh, but North Quincy will call a timeout, so he'll be able to get right back in. Big sack there. Brings up fourth and 15. Uh, and Cohasset got lucky. As we look in the replay, um, fortunately for Cohasset, it wasn't a false start because the man, I think, was going to go in motion step backwards so um, or flat across. So that's not a false start. As you see, Wallenjohn 
Another huge play here. He's come up big in this fourth quarter on this drive. Playing defensive end. Uh, he, he's been able to go one way all night tonight, so he's been, been able to stay fresh. All right, so it's going to be fourth and long now for Cohasset. Fourth and 15. They need to get to the North Quincy 30-yard line for the first down. One minute, 30 seconds to go. If there's anything we know, it's I'm sure Cohasset's going to find a way to get Appleton. It's you're going to be looking up top there. He's by himself. Nate Sampson's up there. Uh, we got Tim Tolan as a deep safety as well. We got Panariti walking out there. So they got three guys able to help out over there and whistle blows and i believe north quincy called another timeout just yeah. before the whistle blew so that's their last timeout and coach ryan craig not happy it's Cuyasa comes out with that four by one formation i don't know if we got a replay on that john just to get just to look at that formation um i will see if we can get a replay yeah. or at least go back to the start of that uh um start of the formation there as you can yeah. see oh. Just that four by four by one there, and at all levels really, this a okay, unique we can freeze formation it right look. In the, we can freeze it when we have the, as the play starts there. So typically, a lot yep, of teams will go. screen out of this, but obviously with uh, you know the situation, you're not going to screen here. But just bringing over four guys, I think they're going to try and see how they cover Appleton up top one on one. When you bring four to one side, you get to at least match it with four. You possibly bring in five. And then with the Raiders playing four down. It's kind of uh, tough to tell we were, we're yeah. able to freeze it there, but, yeah. So, yeah, so they're, they're trying to put Appleton on an island, at least with Samson. They're seeing if they maybe can get a safety over, get one-on-one. -on -one. I imagine North has probably schemed the way, any way possible. They're going to try and have two guys on Appleton. Oh, yeah, there we go. You can see Appleton at the top yep. of the screen. No, it's, we're, we're rolling at the end. That's the, uh, yeah. Yep. So, so now he, they're going to do the same formation. Now he's on the bottom by himself here. they got Panariti walking out to help out. North Quincy almost jumps off sides. They keep on side. Wildfire down the p middle of the field. It's complete. Oh. It's going to be, I think it's going to be a first I down. I got it. And it is. It's complete. And it'll be a first down at the North Quincy 29-yard line. Uh, Tim Tolan was right there. That's the tough part. That formation, uh, it stresses the defense out. And... Cohasset does a good job. They got a couple guys attack in the middle, a couple guys attack in deep. Norjot on the reception there. First and 10 now for the Skippers. Clock continues to tick, though. 110 to go in the game. Yep, they're going to motion again. One on one up top. Wildfire over to the left side this time, and it is incomplete. And was looking for Appleton, as we'll see in the replay. You see, they've been going to this play in the bank all day, so they have Panariti helping out on anything inside. It looks like anything outside, Samson's got him one-on-one. -on -one. Went right through his hands there. He's right there. It's, and Nate's been doing a good job tonight trying to squeeze him towards the sideline, and that's where it makes it tough if you're running that vertical fade and you run yourself into the sideline. You're not giving yourself much room to be able to operate. Close to a pass interference there, but North Quincy gets the call, or no call. All right, second down over the middle, wide open, and it's complete to number 14. Will McLaughlin still on his feet, and with forward progress, they're going to spot him down at the 15-yard line. We'll see on the replay. So that should be a, based on the sticks there, that's going to be a first. Yeah, it should be a first down. So this is one of Cohasset's favorite pass plays. They get a couple deep crosses from the outside of the formation. The inside receiver runs a wheel. So... They're reading that wheel to the crossing route. And Cohasset's had a lot of success hitting that crossing route just underneath the safety. I and think that was North Quincy with the timeout. It looked like they signaled that way. They signaled North Quincy, but I had them down. Oh, yeah, that's their third timeout. Excuse me, I thought I had them down for. Yep. Yep, that's their third timeout. I believe because the scoreboard is been a little inconsistent tonight. Sometimes they put it up there. Sometimes they take it off. Right. Sometimes they haven't. I uh, also marked it down the first half timeouts initially for, for oh. North Quincy as well. <laughs> so that's why I was, I was really like, oh, they had three timeouts uh, already called. But the, how many has Cohasset used? Do you have that? Uh, I have. Uh, they have two left. Okay. So they've used one, two left. Right, so they got plenty of opportunities here. 
Cohasset, I don't know if we're going to be able to get a shot at it, but on their sideline now, they have a bunch of players with cardboard signs with what play to come in for, uh, for a no huddle. Yeah, uh, I think. All right, first down. Wildfire passed over complete, and it is almost intercepted there by North Quincy. Oh. Panaridi almost had that picked off, and he's looking for an offensive pass interference. Uh, he, he ran the right on nope. the cut it. Yep. Uh, that could have been hands to the face, too. Uh, that was awfully close to an offensive penalty for uh, <laughs> offensive face, man. You don't see it called too often. Uh, but here we go. North Quincy does a good job in that defense there. Panaridi's been walked out. And he came inside. It looked like he took Appleton man-to-man -to -man by himself and does a great job. He undercut it. It was a good play by Appleton there to break that up. All right, so we're up second down now. Get the ball at the 15-yard line. 33 seconds to go. Low snap, and he falls down. That play will be dead. Kohasa will have to quickly get out there. Yeah, clock still and running. And they Kohasa called a timeout to stop the clock, so, it looks like. So they called the a timeout. The ref signaled it, but about 10 seconds at least ran off here. So they're probably going to uh, – the officials are going to have to gather here and figure out how much time is left. Let's see if we can take a look at the uh, nice uh, – they tried to get – Appleton on that wheels we saw up top on the replay. And in high school, when your knee is down, your knee is down. You don't get to go up. So they're going to oh, put they 27 yep. seconds left. It's right now showing 21 6. They want 27. That's a big break there for the Raiders. It's third down and long, very long at the 22. Cohasset does have an opportunity to still to get a first down. Is not goal to go. So if they do get a first down, the clock will stop to reset the chains. That will benefit them. And then as you pointed out as well, on their sideline, as we start to pan over, yep, they have some yep. boards there. So some, t you know, every team uses their boards differently. Some of them will just be formations. Uh, some of them will be plays. Some of them are just decoys. Some of them will, th th some of them will just hang the sign there, and it means absolutely nothing. Right, right. Um, so that'll give them an opportunity. I don't see them wearing wristbands, so it looks like if they're going hurry up, it's going to be from the sideline. All right, it's again third and long now. Wildfire looking to pass. Fires down the middle of the field into the end zone. Incomplete. Was looking for number 14, Will McLaughlin. But that brings up now fourth down with 21 seconds to go. Here we go, fourth down and 17 for what looks like it could be the game. Cohasset trying to attack that middle of the field with a little crossing route. They've had some success with that underneath the safety as we take a look at the replay. Appleton uh, well covered on the fade up top. They try and get it right down the middle there. Good job in coverage by Rodriguez Smith. Corner coming across man to man. They're going to go four receivers now. Appleton is a part of the four receivers up top to the left. And he's at the very top of the screen. Wildfire being pressured, throws it towards Appleton, and it's going to be picked yep. off by North oh, Quincy. Picked off there by number seven, Nate Sampson, and Sampson will wrap up this ball game for North Quincy. A big play there. Sampson, the ball was a little underthrown, but Sampson comes up to make the play and will wrap up the victory here for North. Hey, that's that's what you got to do. The ball's underthrown. Wildfire didn't get everything under it, and that was a, a fly ball to center field there for Nate to go get. And, he ran on to win. That caps off an incredible night for him. He's got two, uh, two touchdown catches. He's got an interception as well. He's had a couple pass deflections. Uh, senior captain, uh, three-year varsity player. That's that's a kid you expect to make big plays in big-time moments. And he drew the tough coverage tonight of having to get Appleton one-on-one. -on -one. And, and as we see downfield, he was probably one tackle away from breaking that. I'm not sure if we can. Um, I'm being told in the truck that there was a deflection there, uh, so maybe oh, we maybe can. there was. Yeah, I mean, it, it up and just. It looked like a duck. The thing was spinning funny. That, that it might looks have like been it, tipped. Yeah, it was there, and the the man who did that was Wallenjohn. Uh, just did get it there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice job in that replay. So great, great job there by the Raiders. Galligan's going to nail it down and. Going to wrap up a nice win here for the Raiders. Good to see them get back in the win column, get back on track, even up their record heading into league play. So, final score here, an exciting end to this ball game. North Quincy with a 20 to 14 victory over the Cohasset Skippers. A great effort there. North Quincy really 
pretty much dominated the, the second half, Martin. They really came out and did a great job. Uh, and we really saw in the third quarter, they went down there, uh, held on to, uh, prevented, excuse me, uh, Gohas from scoring, uh, and then get a big touchdown on the fourth quarter as well. And again, final defensive effort there came up there and prevented Cohasset. Uh, and Ben Wallenjohn, outstanding effort here tonight. And we saw at the final play there with uh, that tip ball there. So just great all around effort there by North Quincy on both sides of the ball, especially in the second half. The defense has been spectacular the past couple of weeks. They, they, they lost last week. You know, they got shut out. Uh, they gave up a few touchdowns. Uh, defense only gave up a couple scores, you know, late in the fourth quarter. Uh, so they've been up to the task all week. Uh, the offense was, you know, up to the task in week one down at all of our aims. Tonight was probably the closest effort they've had in putting everything together, especially in that second half. That's probably the best half of football that they've played this year. Defense in that third quarter didn't allow a first down. Class was going three and out punting it. And the offense finally got on track, running game, able to be productive on the ground, get first downs, get the clock moving, just kind of get some offensive rhythm going. And then Mike Galligan uh, making plays happen. Big touchdown pass at the end. Yep. Coming down the stretch. Rolls out when, you know, broken play. He rolls out to the left, nothing's there. Reverses field. Him and Nate Samson have had that connection, you know, for a couple of years now. And Samson does a great job uh, catching it for the winning touchdown. He's got, he had all, uh, both receiving touchdowns tonight, if I'm not mistaken. And then he gets the interception to cap it off. It's a great game for him. Uh, something you like to see. Seeing a captain, a kid who's worked hard for three years. Uh, with the varsity and what what a way to end it, John. You talked about Sampson with that both touchdown catches for, for the night. He had two catches tonight, both for touchdowns. Two catches, 48 yards, two touchdowns. Pretty good stat line there yep. for Nate Sampson. Uh, Will Conley also had one catch for 20 yards. Ben Hudak had a catch, uh, and Taylor Marquez had a catch as well. Mikey Galling in the quarterback, 5 of 15 passing, 72 yards, and two touchdowns as well. A couple of key plays, as we mentioned as well. One of them was a great pass and a catch there by Will Conley down in the third quarter, down the left side, the near sideline, excuse me, that set up the, uh, the Raiders' touchdown as well. Uh, rushing side of the ball for North Quincy. Galligan uh, had 10 rushes for 40 yards. Ben Hudak, 14 rushes for 51 yards. Will Conley, 9 rushes for 37 uh, for the Raiders. Real quick for the Cohasset Skippers, Michael Wildfire, 11 of 29 passing for 168 yards and 2 touchdowns. Liam Appleton had 55 yards on 13 rushes. Will Norjot had 22 yards on one big rush. And Gus Green, 23 yards on 10 rushes for the Skippers. For receiving side of the ball, Liam Appleton, five catches for 93 yards and a touchdown. Shane Mulcahy had one catch for 21 yards. Jack Cullinane, two catches, 17 yards and a touchdown. Norjot had two catches for 23 yards. And Will McLaughlin, one catch for 14 yards to round out the offensive stats for both sides. Just a, a total team effort. I know we've highlighted play of Nate Sampson and uh, you know, Galligan made a great play there. Wall and John, you know, huge fourth quarter, multiple big plays with deflections and sacks. But this, it really was like a total team effort tonight for North Quincy. And, and those guys really pulled together, especially coming out of that locker room. Second half, they, I'm sure they got challenged in the locker room, you know, to show up. And they came ready to play in the second half. All right, with a big victory, North Quincy will now have two games on the road to begin their Patriot League schedule. On Thursday, October 5th, they'll travel down to face off against Plymouth South. And on Friday, October 13th, they'll be down in Pembroke to face off against the Titans. North Quincy will wrap up the regular season with two home games, Friday, October 20th versus Situate, and Friday, October 27th versus Hanover. QATV will be back here next weekend when on Saturday, October 7th, it'll be Roll Hats weekend for the other school here in the city, Quincy High School, and they will face off against Pembroke High School. Again, that game is on Saturday, October 7th at 6 p.m., an hour earlier start. Real quick, want to thank all of our crew that came out here tonight to make this game passable on a, a wet and soggy Veterans Memorial Stadium. On camera, we had Ryan McWade. On replay, Brian Cox. On audio, Joshua Danter. On graphics, Anna El Torre. Our engineer, Chris Potter. And our director, Peter Doherty. So again, final score here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. North Quincy with a big victory, 20-14 to over the Cohasset Skippers. For Martin Dunham, my name is Jonathan Clary. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of QATV Sports. We'll see you next time.